W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa Treasurer. It's time for the excitement of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's coverage is brought to you by the Small Wood and Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremations Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Freddie Law Firm. Standing by is our TV10 broadcast team. So let's head to the field and get today's pregame show underway. We welcome you back on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. We'll now get into our coach's interview brought to you by Parsons Ford. They're located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road or online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Back here on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show with the head coach of the Shepherd University Rams, Ernie McCook. Coach, another good win for your team over Cal over the initial takeaways for you you know I thought our team showed tremendous resilience and grit uh, finding a way to handle some adversity that we had throughout the game and to finish and find a way to win in that game again special teams playing a big role for your team you get the Cam Dorner kick return touchdown was the decision to put Cam down there just kind of how the flow of the game was and, and you needed somebody out on the field or was it like a gut call with that. Cam has been working in that role for a while, and Coach Wright just felt that was the best thing for that kickoff return team, and Cam made a play, and uh, credit to him, Special Teams Player of the Week. Three straight weeks that you've gotten that award. What can you say about that unit and Coach Wright? And they, Coach Wright's done a tremendous job. The guy works tirelessly at that at his job. Uh, he prepares those guys, comes up with a great plan, and, and the players have done a great job executing it. It's the work that they put into it that has shown on the field for them. Defensively, giving up 34 points probably isn't what you want, but you force three turnovers in the game and, and get those stops when you need to. Yeah. Uh, first three turnovers you for, faced all se forced all season. Yeah, you know what? I you know I think when you look at this, if you look at the stats, you could question things. But when you look at the big plays that our defense made and and crucial times. That helped us win the football game. Offensively, the offense seemed like it was their best week. Uh, what was your takeaway? Yeah, I, we, you know, it's like anything else. We, we, we made more plays than we than we had in the past. It, it probably was our best week, but we have a long ways to go in all three phases. We got to continue to be better, and, and hopefully, it'll show this weekend on the field. Kutztown this week, uh, obviously a big rivalry type game. Uh, they've been kind of the toughest team in the division for you so far uh, since you made the jump. Uh, what are you seeing out of this year's Kutztown team? Well, they have 25 seniors. They're well coached. They play extremely hard. Uh, they the guys are. It's the it's the best offensive scheme that we'll see. It's the best defensive scheme we'll see. Uh, they 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 got they just play extremely hard and they're well coached. So you're going to see a really good football team. We're going to have to play well. We're going to have to be better this week than we were last week if we're going to be successful. And we're going to have to have the mindset that we'll play the entire 60 minutes. In your turn home this week, you got the new scoreboard. Is that operating? And uh, what's that like? I uh, you know what? I think we're working or we're working hard to get it up and functional. You know and uh, I could say supply chains or whatever, but you know, I, when it turns on, I, you'll be—I'll know when you know. <laughs> does that help in recruiting at all? I know some people think it does. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great addition to Ram Stadium. I, I think it really looks great, and uh, 
I think it honors a tremendous family. Alan, Sarah, Luke have been very generous in, in giving to our football program. And uh, it's great to honor them uh, for all their hard work, and, and it is a nice addition to our stadium. All right, Coach, thank you. Good luck this week. That concludes our coach interview brought to you by Parsons Ford, located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road in Martinsburg or online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first Parsons. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football, Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney, Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials, or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Before the invitations and the dress, the flowers, cake, candles, or vows, there is an answer to a question proposed with a ring. Bechtel Jewelers knows that an important part of your wedding happens before the I do's. We're a diamond store with an engagement and bridal jewelry selection that's both exciting and accessible. On the big day, there's everything else and there's the ring. Make sure you get this one right at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Mayhem is everywhere. I need new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. Hi, Kresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it, it can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We wanna get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. We now go in the huddle, brought to you by the Myriad Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. Stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue or give them a call at 304-263-4343. We now go in the huddle with Shepard Rams quarterback, Seth Morgan. Seth, another big passing day for you offensively. What was kicking, or what was 
the key to your success in that game against uh, Cal? Um, I think it was just a culmination of a lot of things, but you got to start out with up front, the offensive line, letting up zero sacks. You know, they did a great job, you know, protecting me w versus a defense that sends a lot of pressure. You know, that's what they're known for, Cal. But, uh, you know, they all did their job up front, giving me time. And then uh, just receivers made great plays downfield. Cam Dorner, J JT, uh, Barry Hill, a couple other guys made big plays batting. So uh, I think it was just, you know, a combination of all those that made us so successful on Saturday. You mentioned those wide receivers. How has the chemistry grown with them from the beginning of the year till now? Uh, you know, it's getting better every week. You know, we were trying to figure some stuff out week one. I think that's why we looked a little slow on offense. But, uh, you know, we spent a lot of time out here on the practice field and then just talking through stuff, watching film together, you know, learning more about each other as we play, you know, during game situations, you know, what guys like, what they don't, you know, things along those lines. But, you know, the chemistry keeps increasing week after week. Seems like since that drive against Southern Connecticut State, your confidence and just uh, poise in the pocket has grown. Uh, how, how do you feel that you've gotten better since week one to now? Uh, I think I'm just getting a little, a lot more comfortable and a lot more confident, and uh, you know that's a credit to our coaches and you know the team, you know the players around me on offense, just making me comfortable in that setting, you know knowing they have my back, you know, uh, so all of that. But uh, I really just say just being comfortable, you know, learning the offense better as we're going, you know, all that stuff. But uh, that's how, yeah, that's what it is. Cuts down this week, another tough PSAC opponent. You haven't been a part of the games, but a lot of close games over the years. Uh, what are you looking forward to about this matchup? You know, just I'm really excited just to get back home, you know, play another home game. We haven't played home in a couple of weeks now, and so just having the, the Ram fans behind us supporting us, really excited about that. And then just excited for the challenge, you know, like you said, you know, it's a really tough opponent. There's a strong history between these two teams, and uh, just really excited to be a part of it. What have you seen out of their defense so far? Uh, well, you know, you don't want to say too much, but uh, no, it's just they're very tough. They're very smart, very disciplined. They have great coaches that, you know, make sure their guys are in the right places at the right times. You know, they don't make mistakes, but, uh, you know, we just got to be able to capitalize on, you know, the mistakes that they do make, but they are rare. Um, but, yeah, it's just going to be on us to, you know, play smart, play disciplined, and take what they give us. We now go in the huddle of Shepard Rams corner, Dante Harrison. Dante, uh, for you, you come up with a – Big interception there late in the game to kind of seal the deal for your team, kind of take us through that play. I know Willis had a big day against you guys, but uh, when it mattered, you guys were able to make that play. Okay, yeah, uh, Willis, he was a real good player, but it was all about uh, just not quitting and finishing the play. And I came up with an interception and returned it for some yards to put our offense in a good position to seal the game. For you now as a sophomore, you had that experience last year starting, made some big plays in the secondary. Uh, Clayton Madden goes down though before the season, so you have to step up even more. How have you grown, do you feel like, as a player uh, this year? Just taking on a leader role and being more vocal and helping the uh, other guys out that haven't been here because most of them are new except for uh, most of our, like two of our safeties. But just taking on a leader role now that bad's down and can't be out there with the guys, I just have to be more vocal, more like just more up and just and, and do it with my play as well too because that's what I learned from last year a lot, batting and, and uh, key, Keyshawn. For you, uh, heading into this week, what have been some things that you guys are trying to focus on as a defense uh, to continue to make those improvements? Uh, just focus and intensity and just the details, just worrying about the small details of every play. Because I feel like last game, if we just stopped two big plays, it would have been a it would have been a blowout, a shutout game. It was just, we just got to pay attention to all the little details and just hustle and grind. Cuts down this week, always a tough game, tough rival uh, in your in the PSAC. What have you seen from their offense so far this year? Uh, they're, they're explosive offense. They got a new quarterback, a bunch of young guys, and a, a graduate receiver who um, I think is pretty good. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the matchup. I'm ready to play. I just like going against the best competition. How do you feel about the new scoreboard? Oh, yeah, I love it. It's beautiful. Yeah, I like it. All right, Dante, thank you. Good luck thank this you. week. Thank you. That concludes our player interviews portion of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. When we return, we will have more. This is Shepherd University Rams football on TV10. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. 
The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why owners just do more no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music. Or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why owners just do more no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. Good morning and welcome to Rams Stadium on the campus of Shepherd University. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, as we get you set for Shepherd Rams football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. This afternoon's game, we have the Shepherd University Rams and the Kutztown Golden Bears doing battle. It's 1 and 2 Kutztown versus 3 and 0 Shepherd. Rams coming off of a big win over Cal. California, Pennsylvania, 44 to 34. Puts down coming in at one and two. As I mentioned, our pregame show is brought to you by W. Harley Miller Systems, providing custom integration services services like home and office automation, home theater networking, audio, video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith, as we get set for this ball game Travis it's a Shepherd team that seems to be improving each week they won by one in week one they won by a touchdown in week two and won by ten last week but Kutztown it's four to or it's two to two all time in the four games that these two teams have played and both of the wins for each team have come on the road so trying to end that streak today is Shepherd. Kutztown obviously would like to keep that alive 
Absolutely. And you look at this Shepherd Ball Club, we knew coming in that they were going to have a lot of questions. They had a lot of firepower that they needed to replace. And so far, they have been successful being able to do that. You look at some of the teams that they've been able to beat, and you might say to yourself, well, those games shouldn't be as close. A win is a win is a win at the end of the day. And sometimes you're going to have to win those ugly games on what this young team as far as working together, what they've been able to show is that they've been able to respond in a positive way to adversity and pull out tough wins. You look back at that Cal PA game last week. It was a shootout back and forth, and it would have been very easy for most teams to kind of pack it in and just say it's not our week, but the Rams stayed after it, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. They've had that bend but don't break mentality for most of the season, and it really paid off for them last week when Dante Harrison was able to get a big interception towards the end of the game that really sealed the deal and, and guaranteed that Rams victory. So you're seeing a Rams team that's beginning to find its identity for this season. We have a Cutstown team that's coming off their first win of the season. They've had a couple really tough games out of the blocks, so they're coming in, again, facing another tough opponent on the road, bad weather. So it's going to be a tough test for both teams. But like you mentioned, it has been the team that's been on the road that's had the, had the success in this series. So it'll be interesting to see how things play out today. Shepard is 34-4 and four against the PSAC since Coach McCook took over and the Rams joined the conference. So, I mean, Two of those losses, though, to this Kutztown team, one to Slippery Rock Rock, and one to IUP in the PSAC Championship. That's it. This team has dominated the PSAC play since joining what was supposed to be a tougher conference for them, and they have stepped right in and played well against the competition. Kutztown, though, as we said, a talented team, even with their record being one and two. They had that tough loss to Cal Week 1 where they probably should have won but blew it in the fourth quarter. They beat or they played assumption who's pretty good so you know they've played some tough competition and they are the type of team that has always given Shepard issues as we mentioned it's two to two and with the weather today Shepard has struggled in the rain a little bit that PSAC loss was a rain game to IUP they've had some remember the struggles at Millersville yes the Millersville game the Shippensburg game last year still wins for Shepard but not the type of offense that we are used to seeing when Bajent was in control. Today, Seth Morgan, this is his first test as a Shepard Ram in the rain, and we really don't know about the running game for Shepard. On the Kutztown side, they got two veteran backs that have been there a while and both have two different running styles. If they are able to run the football, which is what they want to do, Travis, it could be advantage Kutztown when you're looking at the running. And you look at the first running back in the depth chart for the Golden Bears, Daryl Davis McNeil. The 5'11", 200-pound grad student, was named first-team All-PSAC East last year. Coming off of a career year, he had 1,013 yards, averaging 5.2 yards a carry, and had a solid game against Shepard last year. More of the bell count just kind of set the tone. He only had 67 yards rushing, only 2.5 yards per carry, but two touchdowns during that game. But what he was able to do was to set up his running mate, Jordan Davis. He came into that same game hit. tough on the defense to try to stop that and you look at today's game conditions as far as the weather's concerned you're going to have to get some type of dividends out of your running game season but you have a very hungry Shepard Rams football team that's looking to make their mark in the history books this year. Now 3-0. Right now we have the captains out on the 50. Shaking hands. The whistle for today's contest.
apologize for those technical difficulties. I believe we are good now on the audio side. So we get set for kickoff here from Rams Stadium. Travis, sorry I abandoned you, but I'm sure you held down things <laughs> just perfectly fine. In situations like that, I just ask myself, what would Nick Verzellini do? Well, if you ask yourself that in life, <laughs> then you'll be successful. <laughs> Travis, did you go over your keys to the game by chance? I did not. Rambling over there? did not. I did not. All right. Well, let's get into those keys to the game brought to you by the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. All right, first off, let's look at the keys to victory for the Cutstown Golden Bears. First and foremost, you got to protect the football today. The weather's going to be a huge issue, but you don't want it to impact you negatively, so you got to protect the football. On defense, you got to try to keep everything in front of you. That's been easier said than done, but if anybody's had the blueprint to do that against the Shepherd Rams team, it's been the Cutstown Golden Bears. Keep everything in front of you, and you're going to have to have great safety play today. Those safeties are really going to have to step up and shine today. It's going to try to take away those 50-50 balls that the Rams have been very successful at using so far this season. You want to establish the run and stick with it? I don't think you have to say that too much with this Cutsdown team. They know where their bread is buttered. And special teams, they got to limit big plays. Shepard has been red hot on special teams this year, so Cutsdown's going to have to be vigilant for that. For Shepard, Again, we're starting off the same way. you got to protect the football. Bad weather out there. Also, Shepard, they were able to make some adjustments last week. You have to be able to pressure the quarterback, rattle the young guy. There's going to be a new quarterback for the Golden Bears this year, Judd Novak, stepping in, playing well. So get to him early, maybe throw his rhythm off. Also on offense, the Rams, you got to work the middle of the field in the passing game. I don't think you're going to be able to rely throwing passes out to the sidelines. You just don't want to risk it that much. Try to work the inside of the field. It's going to make those outside throws a little bit easier. And the last but not least, continue those big plays on special teams for Shepherdstown, excuse me, for Shepherd University in order to get this win today. Interesting kickoff there from Shepherd. They go right at number 47, Cade Clancy, and he recovers it at the 40 yard line. So it's great field position here for the Golden Bears to begin this ball game. Our opening kickoff brought to you by CMA Honda of Winchester, located at 3985 Valley Pike. CMA moving lives forward. And the Rams are showing a lot of respect early on to Anton Loy, a very dangerous kick returner and punt returner, also a quite accomplished cornerback, had some big games here at Shepherd University. They hand it off at Davis McNeil on first down, and he goes forward, tackled by Anilio Pena after a gain of three. It'll be second down and seven for the Golden Bears. The new scoreboard is up, but not operational at this moment. But it looks pretty nice. So I'm looking forward to whenever they do get it up and running. Hopefully next week, the Shepherd back at home again. Novak in the shotgun formation. Davis McNeil, the back to his right. Rams show blitz. They've handed off to Davis McNeil, and Dwayne Grantham read that from the start and stops him for no gain. That time, Cutstown just going with a heavier run look, just a zone blocking scheme up front with that wing blocking on the backside. And like you mentioned, Grantham able to diagnose that quickly and able to get skinny in the hole, come up and wrap up the running back for a minimal gain. Third down and seven from the 43 yard line. Novak in the gun. Davis McNeil the back to his right and reading the signals is Judd Novak as he adjusts at the line of scrimmage. Davis McNeil going in motion, high snap. Throw complete to Ravnell, but Anilio Pena and Dwayne Grantham are there again. Maybe a gain of one. Kutztown will be forced to punt after the excellent field position to begin the game. And that way you don't get what you want on that drive, but what you don't do is make a big mistake that kind of sets the tone for the game. So you come out kind of feeling things out, see how that Rams defense responds, and now you can play field position. You can punt it, pin Shepard deep, and hopefully if your defense is able to stand tall, you'll get the ball back with even better field position. A wise move on a day like today where the weather is not going to be working with you, you're going to have to try to play a little bit of field position. Miles Greer will return it from inside his own 20-yard line. He's brought down after... Maybe a gain of one or two on the play by Tyler Wary, the linebacker for the Golden Bears. So it'll be first and ten for Shepard from its own 15-yard line. 
and Seth Morgan in the offense trot onto the field against this talented Kutztown defense, allowing just over 80 yards rushing per game, under 300 yards passing as well. So they have been a solid unit early in the season. So far, the wind has held off. That was the concern heading in. The rain is dying down slightly here on first down and 10 from the 15. Pistol formation. They'll run Malachi Brown off the right side. He has a good hole and lowers his shoulder across the 20-yard line out to about the 23 before he's brought down. A good block that time by Chandler Brown just crashing down, washing that defensive end down inside. And we're starting to see Malachi Brown. Now the game's starting to slow down a little bit, and he's starting to anticipate those holes opening up. And that time just a good clean cut to pick up a nice chunk on first down. Gain of seven on the play. Brown made something out of nothing there. Is coming right through the hole was Earl Vaz, the defensive lineman, unblocked. And Brown able to get a yard or two on the play. will bring up third and short for the Rams. About third down and one from their own 24-yard line. Just over 12 minutes to go in this opening quarter. First drive for Shepard. Morgan in the pistol again. Brown remains the back. Sends Dorner in motion. Pump fake from Morgan. Dumps it down to Malachi. He has the first down and more out across the 30 before he's tackled on the play. And, and that's the thing that you've really seen Seth Morgan have success with so far this year is having those off-schedule throws where he's able to hit the check down. Doesn't have the big arm where he can burn you over the top. But once the play breaks down, he can get outside the pocket, can extend the play with his mobility, and he does a really good job of finding those check down receivers, usually out in the flats to pick up something when there's really nothing that comes out from the initial play. Shepard going no huddle now, first and 10 from the 30. Play action under some pressure. Throws off his back foot and intercepted. Intercepted by Drew Henser, the defensive back, his second of the year. Not a good look from Morgan. He threw it off his back foot. He was under pressure and just kind of threw one out there to the flat, and Henser read it all the way. And that was one of the things we talked about during our pregame as the key safety play is going to be important. And when you look at that secondary, Henser's the starter, but they're going to be missing C.J. Brown, and that's a big guy to miss. He was first team all PSAC East last year, so he's not going to be out there, but Henser able to step up in his absence and make a big play and get this Golden Bears offense set up with very good field position here in the early first quarter. So again, Kutztown has good field position. They take over on the Shepard 35-yard line. Receiver goes in motion. Novak looking for a bullet over the middle in and out of the hands of Ravnell. Falls incomplete will be second and ten. A little too hot that time from the young quarterback. He's stepping in for a banged up Donnie Blaine. He played in the first game versus I think Assumption. Novak just has taken over. Just took the job? Yeah, it seemed like Blaine played a little bit, but I believe he was the starter uh, for week one. And I see Donnie Blaine is on the sideline. With his helmet off. That's tough. He had a career game against Shepard last year, did Blaine. He did, but Novak coming in as a redshirt freshman. They'll hand to Ravnell on the jet sweep. Shepard strings it out well. Kowser. Yep, Kevin Kowser, the first man there. So far, the Shepard defense doing what it does best, uh, using its speed to its advantage and not a whole lot of open plays for Kutztown. I mean, they did have a drop uh, on first and ten, and anytime you go to second and ten, it makes it tough because you're going to run the football. It really puts the event, it really gives the advantage to the defense when you're at second and ten. Very tough to have a play call ready for that because the defense is likely going to call some type of run blitz, realizing that you're probably not going to want to throw the ball because of the weather, and you don't want to look at third and ten. Gain of two on the play, third down and eight for Novak. Handed off to Davis McNeil. He takes a shot from Grantham and Komayow. Close to the first down marker, but it's going to be ruled fourth down and short. And Grantham had a monster game versus Cutstown last year. Had 16 tackles, seven, seven of those solo. 
So looking to get back to form. He's been a bit banged up so far this year, so hasn't been the guy that was really making plays and dominating on the defensive side of the ball last year. But as the season wears on, you're starting to see him get more and more comfortable with that new group out there and really start to flash his abilities. Five-yard carry on the play. Ravnell going in motion from right to left. Novak takes the handoff or takes the snap, gives it to Davis McNeil. I don't think he got there. Jack Baxter coming up and filling the hole for Shepard, and the Rams force a turnover on downs after the interception. So Morgan makes a mistake, but his defense bails him out. It will be first and ten for Shepard. And again, I'm not sure why I realize that the Rams' defense has had its struggles stopping the run this year, but most of those runs have been right up the gut. You're going to have a difficult time trying to get out on the edge and turn that corner against that speedy defense. And that time, instead of running downhill with your big bruiser of a running back, you try to stretch it outside, and it was just a whole host of Rams out there waiting for him. So big stop that time for the defense and gives the offense a chance for a do-over. One guy that's also had big games against Shepard in the past, Jordan Davis. I've yet to see him get a carry here in the early going as Morgan hands it off. Ball. The ball comes out, and Kutztown recovers. Brown fumbles. Cam Wolf with the recovery for Kutztown, and the Golden Bears will take over again on Shepard's side of the field. So a tough start to the day for the Rams. Their defense has come through with two stops. Essentially a three and out and a, and a turnover on downs, but the Rams' offense has now turned it over on back-to-back plays. Travis with 9.23 to go in the first quarter. Protecting the ball is at a premium today. It might not be as flashy as what you want to do, but you're just going to have to ground and pound today. Do not try to fight against the elements. That was a lesson that the Rams should have learned last year when they went up to IUP, and it was a rainy, windy day, much like it is today. So don't try to fight it. Adjust your game plan accordingly and just two hands on the ball at all times during today's game because it's just going to be tough to hold on to the ball in today's weather conditions. Running the ball up the middle, we apologize. Currently, our main camera having some issues, it looks like. So, that's why your view is not the best here. We'll we'll go radio style for now. Second down and two from the 35-yard line for Kutztown. It's a four-receiver set after the eight-yard carry. Davis in the backfield to the left of Judd Novak. Looks like our camera is now back. And Novak will hand it off to Davis up the middle and no room. Shepard is there. Could have the first. He only needed two, but I think he only got maybe one on the play. It's a patient run, but really no room up front. Although Shepard does have an undersized defensive front, they are pretty stout at the point of attack. And that time able to jam things up just enough to force a third and short on this Golden Bears offense. Third down and one for the Golden Bears from the 34-yard line. 8-10 to go in this first quarter. No score between Shepard and Kutztown. Jordan Davis is the back, the smaller runner. And they will go Davis, and oh, it's blown up. Omari Terry off the edge. Omari Terry... Not your typical size for a linebacker, but he sure hits like one. That time, it was no doubt in his mind. He knew what was coming. You could tell he did his film work before today's game. And Terry just blew up the runner on that play. Oh, my goodness. A loss of three makes it fourth and four. In that situation, as long as you don't go back, backwards, you feel pretty good if you're Kutztown because you're like, well, we got two plays to get a yard. If we can't do that, we don't deserve to win. Now you lose three, and it's fourth and four for the Golden Bears. You could go pass. You could go run. I think you have to throw it even with the weather conditions. It just Shepard seems to be sniffing out anything you go to on the ground. Novak will throw on fourth and four. He's looking deep down the middle of the field. Incomplete, but a flag comes in. The pass was intended for Caden (laughs) Hasty. But the flag coming in from that back official most likely means pass interference or defensive holding. I thought it was pretty good coverage from what I was able to see. They were, And usually PSAC officials will, will let these guys play when the ball's in the air. It didn't look like a lot of contact on that play, but 
too much for the referee's liking. Makes a big call to give a fresh set of downs to this Golden Bears offense. I have to, I don't know what the referee saw, but from my vantage point, it didn't look like the wide receiver was impeded at all. The only thing I could think of is if there was some sort of hold on that backside where we don't really have the best angle of it. I don't see a lot of disagreement from the Shepherds' sideline, and they would have a better view since they're on that opposite side of the field from us. But from our vantage point, didn't look like too much. But, again, I'm thinking probably if there was something, it was on that back side where we really couldn't tell. So first down and 10 for Kutztown from the 22-yard line after the penalty. Sometimes just throwing it deep can result in a long penalty. And there we go, pass interference, setting up the Golden Bears. Davis goes in motion. Davis McNeil remains the back to the right of Novak. And they'll swing it out to Jordan Davis on a screen pass. He's knocked out of bounds by Dante Harrison and Anilio Pena. Five-yard pickup brings up second and five now for the Golden Bears as they move into the red zone against Shepard for the first time today. And you see Cutstown just trying to stay conservative on first down. They just want to go out there and get some positive yards on first down. They're trying to win on first down, so they're not going to be backed up for those third and long situations where they're forced to pass the ball, particularly in today's weather conditions. And you don't want to put that much pressure on your young quarterback. So if you're able to get some yards on first down, kind of opens up the playbook for the rest of the series. They spotted at the 18, four-yard pickup, second down and six. They'll run Davis this time again. Shepard did a pretty good job off the edge. Looks like Bednarski was the first one there, along with Jack Baxter and Omari Terry in on that play for Shepard. So it'll be third down, two-yard pickup from the 16, makes it third and four, and still potentially hold the Golden Bears to a field goal attempt. This Rams defense needs to be vigilant. Novak can pull the ball and run it himself, coming off of a big game last week where he had three carries for 45 yards. So down this close, the running back in that sidecar position could see a zone read fake where the quarterback calls his own number. Novak. Throws over the middle, gets batted up in the air and intercepted. Omari Terry coming away with the interception, and Shepard's defense gets another stop. A out to start the game after a good field position on their own 40 for Kutztown. A turnover on downs and an Omari Terry interception gives the ball back to the Rams, way backed up inside their own five-yard line, but the Rams' defense... Coming through again here, Travis. But can Shepard hold on to the football? That has been an issue on the last two plays, a Morgan interception and a fumble. And that's just huge. You're able to force two turnovers on the road, and you're not able to come away with any points. So right now, Cutstown missing some huge opportunities to put some distance between themselves and Shepard. But Shepard, again, standing tough, and the young quarterback is trying to squeeze the ball into a tight situation. And, again, you're not going to be able to catch the ball cleanly in today's weather conditions. As here, Russell runs forward for a gain of about two off that right side. Bring up second and eight for the Rams from their own six-yard line. It's already shaping up to be a ugly kind of game, but that's going to, of course, match the weather, and Shepard has been able to pull out these ugly type of wins basically three times so far this season, so this is a situation that they're comfortable in, but right now just trying to get out of the shadow of their own goal line. What's kind of been good or, I guess, weird about it is that the rain has pretty much stopped as – run here with Russell, yeah, but I the think, field has to be you know, pretty yeah. wet, obviously, and that would still make the ball wet every time you snap it. So. And I think Russell understands the assignment. He had two hands on the ball the entire way through the line of scrimmage on that one. So he, he doesn't want to be the guy that turns the ball over one more time. And about two or three on the play brings up a third and six from their own Nine-yard line for Shepard, 4.20 to go in this first quarter. No score between the two teams. The Rams are backed up. Morgan sending Dorner in motion. Seth will throw. Has time. Throws toward the right side, and that was nearly intercepted. Tipped at, tipped up by Gabe Japilli, the defensive lineman, and Shepard will be forced 
And he did, and he did him a favor by batting that pass down because if he's able to get the ball over him, Anton Lloyd is sitting there waiting to get the ball. That is not a corner that you want to test. He doesn't stand very tall, only 5'9", 175 pounds, but the redshirt senior was named second team all PSAC East, and he was a guy the last time he was in this stadium made some huge plays to get the win for Cutstown. So that's not a player that you want to test. Fair catch, single four by the Golden Bears, as that is Lloyd back there at the 43-yard line. And he mentioned the big plays he had last time these two teams met here at Rams Stadium. Of course, the blocked field goal return for a touchdown was the one that probably stands out to Rams fans as it ended up Being leading the difference in the, yeah, game, the yeah. difference in the game. And, of course, Shepard falling in that one. I believe he also had an interception in that game yes. as well. Every game between these two teams has been a one-score game. The largest margin of victory is eight. So it's been a battle. And during our time traveling, calling these PSAC games, you, there's some players that you look forward to seeing when you go call games. And I, I have to tell you what, Anton Lloyd is at the top of my list. He, he's an excellent football player, and I'm always excited to have a chance to watch him do his thing on Saturdays. Play action, looking deep for Ravnell. Got Harrison beat, but he couldn't haul it in. Harrison with a good recovery to make it difficult and that will bring up second and ten. It's clear that Kutztown has taken a few shots so far that they haven't panned out. You could tell that's something where they're just trying to loosen up the box a little bit. They know that they want to run the ball and they realize that the defense probably knows that as well. So if they can take some shots downfield, maybe pull somebody out of the box and then they can get back to do what they like to do. A good plan so far hasn't panned out for the Golden Bears offense. I talked to Dante Harrison this week. He had mentioned that this defense is close to being a great unit, but they just got to focus on the little things. Said those two big plays last week, if they don't give those up, it's a much different ball game. Novak gets the QB keeper here, and he's looking to run and takes a shot. Down at about the 49-yard line, coming up making the hit in Elio Pena. A few others finish him off and Novak not an imposing quarterback like we've seen in, in the past couple of weeks you know the 6'5", 230 like the prototypical size of a quarterback more of the 6'1", 190 more of the guys that you're starting to see play quarterback position now the red shirt freshman coming in like we mentioned taking over for Donnie Blaine the grad student which is crazy because Donnie Blaine was second team all PSAC last year and had a career game against Shepard so that shows you the type of competition at this level. Nobody's job is safe. Third down and four. Novak looking to throw. Has time. Rolls to the right. Avoids the sack and throws another dangerous one. It got tipped three times and nearly hauled in by Sincere Thomas, but it fell incomplete. What a crazy play that would have been. Novak definitely not afraid to try to fit it into the tight windows. And Kutztown will be forced to punt again. So neither team really in sync in the early goings of this one. Fourth and four. It's a defensive battle. The Golden Bears will punt from their own 49-yard line with 2.59 to go in this opening quarter. So I understand that you, that you want to break some keys and get the defense off balance, but eventually you're going to have to go back to your bread and butter and just try pounding the ball and see if you can get it to a third manageable type situation instead of just dropping back and taking shots downfield and just risking the football at this point. At least on the Kutztown side, they are winning the field position battle. They've been living in Shepherd territory throughout this first quarter. The farthest pack they've started is from their own 40. So it's been, you know, a great positional situations, great opportunities for Kutztown that they're just not taking advantage of. Shepard has the ball back. They'll need a long drive here. Ball on their own 13-yard line. First down and 10 with 2.49 to go in the opening quarter. As Morgan lines up in the gun, it looks like Malachi Brown is back in the backfield to his right, and they will run Brown. Misdirection play. He heads to the right side and gets across the 16-yard line, tackled on the play by Justin Harris. Our first quarter presented to you on TV 10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. 
Call 304-263-3361, as well as the Skinner Law Firm, Skin, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, representing accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com. Morgan throws underneath, complete to Dustin Fisher. Pass complete over the middle to Fisher. A short gain. Fisher, only his third catch so far this season. And, again, that's going to be important. You're going to have to be able to make some plays over the middle. You're not going to be able to make plays to the sidelines. Again, Seth Morgan, adequate arm strength but not big arm strength, and you don't want those balls sailing on the sidelines when you have a player like Anton Lloyd out there just lurking because he has a big play waiting to happen. not certain what's going on here at the officials. I didn't see a flag. Penalty, though, on the play. Offsides going against Kutztown. Or against Shepard. No, it is against the Golden Bears, so that play actually didn't count, even though it went completely through. So I didn't see any flags, but. So Fisher, back down to two catches this year. There was one apparently on this near sideline that we couldn't really see from where we are. High snap, and that one tipped and incomplete. Coming off the edge there, I think it was Henser. It was uh, Wari. Or not Wari, sorry. Yep. It's all the three. But double yep. three there. Yeah. And Wari, the six foot, 230 pound grad student, had a solid game against Shepard last year. Eight tackles for those solo, had a tackle for loss, a forced fumble, and two quarterback hurries. So, certainly a player where we're going to be saying his name a lot during the course of the game. So, we'll say it's third and two for Shepard from its own. 21-yard line. Dorner in motion. Haven't got him going yet today. Neither receiver has a catch so far. Morgan going to throw it over the middle. There's Cam Dorner. First down, Shepard across the 30-yard line. Frustration on the Kutztown end. Wary coming up and making the tackle. And again, just sticking with the run is going to pay dividends, and we saw it on that play. Having established the run or at least uh, established that you're willing to run the ball today, it's going to help set up play action passes, and you're getting Morgan out of the pocket where he's very comfortable with finding those check down wide receivers. And that time it was Cameron Dorner, and he was able to pick up a big first down. Morgan throws a bullet over the middle. There's Dorner again. He takes a shot at the 45 yard line, but he's the one getting up quick. Antoine Lloyd, I'm sorry, Justin Harris coming up making that hit. First and 10, Shepard from the 45-yard line is another big pass play. Gain of 14 on the play, and a player now slow to get up. As that look to be? Oyama Adaga. Adaga, the player down at the 40-yard line. So he's the young man, and now they're going to be really stretched thin in that secondary for cuts down because, like we mentioned, C.J. Brown is out today, and now we have Adaga. He's going to be looked at for this play, so... One of the things that, that was going to be critical for this cuts down defense is going to be stretched that much more thin with, with the injury. He came down, looked like, was favoring that shoulder. Yeah, I think it is that right shoulder. So, not sure if it's a stinger. Yeah, it seemed to be involved in that hit with Dorner. He went down low to, to cut down the big wide receiver, and sometimes you take a knee to that shoulder, and those shoulder pads only do so much. Especially when guys are going full speed. Absolutely. And the only cure for a stinger is five to ten minutes of cursing. <laughs> First and ten from the 45-yard line. Morgan in the pistol. Brown the back. The run Malachi off that right side. Doesn't find much room. Good job by that Golden Bears defense. Brandon Hill. Or Heil coming through on that one. Second and 10, final 40 seconds of this first quarter. No score between Shepard and Kutztown. Gain of about one on the play, so we'll make it a second and nine for the Rams. Morgan adjusting things with Barry Hill as he goes out to the wide side. Cordell Batten is the slot receiver, and Jeremiah Taylor, the receiver to the near side. They'll go with Brown and... Oh, it looked like a draw. He gets some room, but then it's meta around the 50-yard line. A 
with Jalen DeVos in on the tackle, the 5'11", 220-pound senior. And the Rams think that they have picked up on something in this Golden Bears defense. So far, they've shown that play several times. It's almost a counteraction where the running back, he's already set up in that sidecar position to the right. He breaks in to get the handoff and then takes it right back out to that side, just trying to to take advantage of an aggressive defense that's going to flow to the ball quickly. Hopefully you can get them out of position and get on the edge. So that will do it for the first quarter of play. No score between Shepard and Kutztown. Let's take a 60-second break and return with more Shepard Rams football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. You back here to Shepherdstown. Missed the quick pass underneath. Uh, Shepherd is just short of the first down, and surprisingly, he's going to punt. And again, it seems like on fourth and one. Yeah, it seems like Shepherd has realized what the Golden Bears are. If it's going to be a nip and tuck game, you might as well go ahead and embrace a field position type of battle. So Ryan Barrick will punt a little bit of a high snap from Fry. It's not a great looking punt, but it will well it actually worked out really well as it bounces all the way down to inside the five yard line. It looked from my angle that that was gonna head out around the twenty, but it stayed in, kind of curved back in and then rolled all the way down inside the five. So Shepard will take that. And something on that play, I'm sure the Shepard coaching staff saw that. That front line of the Golden Bears, they retreated quickly on that play. They put no rush on the ball at all. So that might be a possibility for a fake down the road. If they're going to abandon their position that quickly to get back to block, it might be something where you put in some type of uh, trick play and, and go for it on a fourth down. So I was kind of surprised to see them bail out like that, but you have a returner like Anton Lloyd. You want to get as many guys back in the wall as you can to try to create some space for that young playmaker. So first and ten from their own four for Kutztown. Novak in the shotgun formation. Daryl Davis McNeil is the back, and they'll run up the middle. Pena coming up to make the tackle, bring up second down. Davis McNeil, the ball carrier brought down by Pena for a shepherd. Second quarter just getting started here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. No score between Shepard and Kutztown and what has been a defensive battle between these two teams. Turnovers on both sides, interceptions on both sides. A fumble for Shepard, so two turnovers for the Rams. One for the Golden Bears on second and six after the four-yard carry. Novak looking to move this football for... KU and they run it with Daryl Davis McNeil tackled on the play. I'm sorry, that's Jordan Davis now in the backfield. Again, and it's not so much that they have like contrasting styles, they have styles that complement one another. We're talking about Davis McNeil with Davis and Davis. He didn't decide sounds, to keep sounds, the McNeil. Sounds, sounds like a law firm, <laughs> Davis, McNeil, and Davis. <laughs> it could be three people. Though. There we go. That's part of the mystery. Yeah, nobody knows. Third and four for Kutztown, and a penalty going against the Golden Bears will back them up. Ball on their own 11-yard line, so... That will move back, and this will be a great situation for Shepard here on a third and long. 
So now backed up, third and long in your own territory. This Rams defense is poised for a turnover to get their offense the ball back on the short porch. So right now the Golden Bears, you're going to have to go conservative. What your main goal is right now, of course you want to try to go for that first down, but what you really want to do is get your punter a little bit of space so he's not going to be lined up on that back line when you have to punt the ball away. Third down and eight on their own six-yard line. Novak in the shotgun. Davis is the back. Novak throws an incomplete. Omari, I'm sorry, that was Gianni Gamble in coverage for Shepard. Pass falls incomplete, four for eight. As Kutztown forced a punt, and the field position battle works for the Rams. Potentially they can set up something for Miles Greer, who, of course, returned one for a touchdown for Shepard in week one. The Rams have had three straight weeks with a return touchdown, winning three straight special teams players of the week in PSAC, in the PSAC East. The punt gets away. It's a line drive, bounces, and this will be... Shepard field position on the Kutztown side of the field at the 49-yard line. So great field position for the Rams here. Travis with 12.04 to go in this second quarter. No score. And essentially it's almost like you did go for it on that fourth down and got that yard. (laughs) And we haven't even used this side of the field going towards the, the team room. We've been strictly down on the end with the side of the new scoreboard. So see if the Rams can take advantage of this good field position. And, again, it it may not be flashy, but it's just a—it's going to be a grinded-out type of game. And the first team to really just to to embrace that style of play and just stick with it, I think it's going to be the first one to to have some success. Considering the weather, the Rams fans have come out, haven't had a lot to cheer for so far for either team. But Malachi Brown finds some room off the right side, gets down to the 45-yard line, gain of about, Four on the run, second and six. Our second quarter presented to you on TV 10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. Morgan trying to adjust things at the line of scrimmage. Brown the back. They'll run, or they'll fake. Or read option, I should say, with Morgan, and he doesn't find too much room. Our other second quarter sponsor here on TV10, Hagerstown Ford. Revolutionizing the car buying experience. Go to HagerstownFord.com. So it'll be third down for Shepard. No gain on the play. Third and six. Fisher in at tight end. He is split out. Looking for Taylor on that far side. No flag, and the pass falls incomplete. Justin Harris and Jeremiah Taylor were hand fighting on that far side. Harris the man in coverage. So I'm not sure. They don't call that one. But then they called a pass interference earlier in the game where there seemed to be minimal contact. So not sure why that happened. And that's something that Morgan has had success with this year is is throwing those pump fakes and then throwing those double moves to the short side of the field. And that time the ball is able to hang up in the field. You want to stay away from those safeties, even though they're stretched a little bit thin in the backside of the defense for cuts down. Still don't want to challenge those safeties. You have already given up uh, interception to one so far. The boos rain down in Shepherdstown. This could be trouble. Lloyd getting it on the run. Close to stepping out of bounds, luckily for Shepard. He only got out to about the 18-yard line. But still able to give his offense a little bit of room to operate. Don't want to have them backed up yeah, it's like much they were. Than the, the four. <laughs> yes. Don't want to have them pinned up against their own goal line like they were on that last drive. That, that really limits the type of plays that you can call. And Shepard really put some pressure on the quarterback on that last series when they did that shift at the last second, that, that moment right before the snap. And that really puts a lot of pressure on those offensive linemen because when those linemen come up, they want to make their reads. They want to know what their responsibility is for that play. And when you make that little shift or motion, like right before the snap of the ball, you really put the pressure on them and make a decision. Who am I going to block? How are we going to handle this? 
And sometimes in that confusion, a lineman can get through and create some havoc in the backfield. Ten and a half minutes to go in this first half. No score between Shepard and Kutztown. Novak rolling, looking to throw. Forbes providing pressure. Tipped up in the air and intercepted. JT Komayow coming away with it. And the Rams will take over in Kutztown territory. Novak continuing to try to thread that needle, and it has hurt him. Two interceptions in this first half. That one tipped up in the air by the Rams' defense. JT Komayow coming away with it. And, Travis, this Rams' defense is starting to force some turnovers and do some things that we are used to them doing. It took a few weeks to get it going, but last week you forced three. This week you forced two. And, again, it all starts with pressure up front. When you start to speed up that clock in the quarterback's head, especially a redshirt freshman, a lot of times it's going to be to your benefit. Morgan throwing off his oh, back man, foot. And good pick. It's intercepted. That was a heck of a catch. What a grab by the defensive lineman, Gabe Giappelli. He is listed as a DN at 6'1", 235, but he's been dropping back in coverage quite a bit, so it's either a zone blitz or he's more of an outside linebacker, DN hybrid. But, man, you can't give it right back to him. And I understand you you have the matchup that you want. You got a running back on a defensive end, you feel like that it's in your favor. But when you hang that ball up in the air like that, you have a chance for that walk-up DN. He's kind of a hybrid between a linebacker and a defensive end. Sometimes he puts his hand in the dirt. Other times he doesn't. On that play, he was able to hang with the running back on down the sidelines, and he was able to go up to the top shelf and pick that ball off. And right now this has just been a turnover fest early on in this ball game. First and ten from the 17. Right back to Kutztown football. Morgan with two picks today, two for Novak, and they'll run the ball with Jordan Davis. He's got a hole, but it closes quickly as Pena coming up and making the hit. So it'll be second down for the Golden Bears as we come up on 10 minutes to go in this first half. Gain of about one on the play will bring up second and nine for the Golden Bears. See if Cutstown sticks with the young signal caller we saw earlier this season at the Edinburgh game where they had the young quarterback and Matt Carlisle had some struggles early on. They went to Isaac Bernard down the stretch, and he really settled that offensive unit down. Like we mentioned, they have a seasoned veteran and Donnie Blaine on the bench for Cutstown, so maybe see a possible change if the turnovers don't correct themselves. Play action. Novak over the middle has his big tight end in stride. Husser down inside the 50-yard line, and Kutztown has moved the ball into Shepard territory. Christian McDowell making the tackle. Tyreek Husser, the 6'3", 230-pound senior from Woodstown, New Jersey, with the big catch and run, not really known as a receiving target, but making it work for the Golden Bears as they head into Shepard territory to the 48. Coming into the boy, into today's ball game, only had one catch in the first three games of the season, like you mentioned, a lot of times they're used for their size and their physicality and in, in blocking in the run game, but no better friend to a young quarterback than some good tight end play. Grantham coming on a blitz. Shepard on the run blitz reads it perfectly. Kevin Kowser, JT Comeyow, and Jack Baxter combined for the tackle. A loss of about two on the play. Bring it back to the 49 of Kutztown. Second and 13, so they'll say a loss of three on the play. 8.20 to go in this first half. Still no score between Shepard and the Golden Bears of Kutztown. Passing situation here on second and 13. Kutztown having some issues figuring out where to line up. The play clocks aren't on, so don't know how much time was left, and Novak under pressure. He had to throw it away. Intended for Ravnell. Coming off the edge for the Rams was Carter Adams. At least that's who we have, but I don't believe that's correct. Wearing number 90 as they list Adams as a fullback unless he's transitioned to D-line.
Now we're seeing this. Uh, that was a switch that we saw last week was Shepard going to a three-down lineman look, a 3-3 stack type of scheme to really change up and give different looks to the offense. And what it, what it gives you is a, a lot of variety as far as blitz packages you can send after the quarterback. Novak under pressure again, rolling out. Throws him. What a grab on the Kutztown side, hauled in by Caden Hasty. It's a first down, Golden Bears, on a third and long. What a catch by Hasty. Good job that time by Novak, keeping his eyes downfield as the pocket collapsed in on him. And you mentioned Hasty. He's a 5'10, 175 pound redshirt senior, has nine catches, not including that one. 131 yards and a touchdown this year. Coming off of a big game last week, had three catches for 74 yards and a touchdown. Jordan Davis has a decent hole, gets the ball down to the 32-yard line, tangled by Pena. Now you're starting to see this Golden Bears offense starting to settle down a little bit, trying to find their footing in today's contest and get some positive plays strung together. Gain of three on the play. For Kutztown, 6.49 to go in this first half. The way it's been rolling, the Rams do get the ball to start the second half. Kutztown, though, could potentially kill this entire clock, just how this half has gone. Novak firing it in the flat, spinning off of a... Shepard's well, just too fast. Too, too fast. Richie Aguilar was able to make the play. It looked like Davis was going to spin off of him, but instead Aguilar makes the tackle. It's a loss, bringing it back now to a third and loss. He had a third and seven. Now you're backed up to about third and 13, third and 14. And, and you see the Golden Bears, what they're trying to do is try to stretch that box a little bit from sideline to sideline to create some lanes for the running backs to hit. But again, when you try to challenge this Shepard defense as far as speed to the edge, a lot of times you're going to come up short and, and struggle to find any type of positive yardage out of that time. And that time, Aguilar able to make a good play in space against a very speedy Jordan Davis. That's a D lineman making that play. Under pressure is Novak. He escapes another sack. Grantham bringing him down finally is Komiyao. No gain on the play. Fourth and 14, what do you do if you're Kutztown? You're on the Shepherd side of the field, but they are playing the same strategy of the field position. They will punt, loss of about a yard on the play, fourth and 15. And you also have a very good punter, and Nate Millard was named second team all PSAC East last year, averaging 42.8 yards per punt. We don't need all that big leg on this one, but he can direct it very well. And Miles Greer will wave for the fair catch. It bounces all the way down to about the one-yard line. Good job, Cam Wolf. Put his heels on the goal line and stop that ball dead. So Shepard will take over with 4.57 to go in this first half. Let's take a 30-second break, try to get some of our sponsors in. This is Shepard Ranch Football on TV 10. Makeup is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. We welcome you back to Shepherdstown. No score, first down and 10 for the Rams, and Shepard moved early. Won't really affect anything. The ball's at the one. <laughs> yeah. We'll scooch it back about an inch. And half a distance. <laughs> an inch. <laughs> Start measuring. <laughs> yeah. How long would be half a distance here? All right, there we go. First and ten from their own one. Or now it should be, I guess, first and ten. Ball. And, inch. and Malachi Brown coughed it up again. Kutztown recovers the football at the 11-yard line. Jo Harris coming up with it. Justin Harris, the man to recover the fumble. And that might end the Malachi Brown running back experiment today. Two hands on the ball. 
at this point, I don't know what more you need to see. It's going to be tough to, to handle the ball in any circumstance, but particularly in today's circumstance. And it wasn't anything where he had bad technique. He had it, five points of contact, high and tight, but just a big hit right on the ball, two hands on the ball, especially well, in today's game. If Kutztown doesn't score it from here, we're not going to see points today, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> it may end in penalty kicks. <laughs> <laughs> First and 10 from the 12. Davis McNeil slips out of the backfield. Sunday tight end in motion, and they'll run with their quarterback down to about the 10. Pena, again, he's had a great first half. Coma Yao cleaning it up as well. Aguilar in the mix. And motioning out Davis McNeil that time, then you bring the big tight end across, set up that quarterback power. Again, we talked about Novak being able to run the ball effectively. Ten carries coming into today's game, averaging 7.7 yards per carry. And it's very tough to account for that quarterback's running ability, particularly inside the red zone. So the Golden Bears trying to take advantage of that. But again, the Shepard Rams defense has been able to rise to the occasion and turned him back with a minimal gain. Second and nine after the one-yard pickup. Ball on the 10. Kutztown can get a first down without getting into the end zone. Oh, right now on a Pena. wide receiver screen. Shepard all over it again. Anilio Pena leading the charge. And, I mean, if, if Kutztown's going to call these plays, it's not going to work. I don't know what they're really trying to go here. Quarterback power isn't necessarily – I mean, it's not like Lamar Jackson's back there. <laughs> And a wide receiver screen in this part of the field doesn't seem to be the best situation either, especially thrown to the short side where there's not much room over there. Pena does, and, and it wasn't so much that, that it was a, a bad play call. Pena just made an outstanding job of fighting off the block and making the tackle. You're hoping that that wide receiver can at least hold him up, so maybe switch out that wide receiver for a tight end or running back, get somebody that's going to be a little bit more physical at the point of attack. Well, on third down and long, they run Daryl Davis McNeil up the middle, and he doesn't find much room down to about the nine-yard line, three-yard pickup, and but, I guess but they'll settle your, for the field goal. Yeah, but to your point, you have two running backs and Davis and Davis McNeil. You're down inside the 10, and they don't touch the ball until it's like third and a mile. Yeah. that's It doesn't make sense to me, yeah. but I've never been an offensive coordinator. I'm not saying that I know better, but it just – with some interesting decisions there. It just seems like they're not playing to their strengths. Or not really being aggressive. Maybe they're worried about turning it over again. Fourth and seven, field goal here coming on from Dawson Evitz, and it is good. So Kutztown takes the lead. The first points of the day, it's a field goal from Evitz. 3 nothing. Golden Bears, 2.32 to go in the first half. And we will take a 60-second, or just make it a 30, Colin, and we'll have more Shepard Rams football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. We welcome you back to Ram Stadium. 2.32 to go in this first half. 3 nothing Kutztown as the Golden Bears get on the board after the fumble and kick that short field goal. So it is at four turnovers that has resulted in three points for the Golden Bears. So the Bears, uh, Golden Bears, I'm sure, happy to have the lead. And the Rams also have to feel pretty good that they've turned the ball over that many times and the result is only a, a three-point deficit. It's a four-play drive resulting in a 37-yard field goal. Here's Cam Dorner going back, trying to provide a spark. Our scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Field goal up and good from Dawson Evitz. And Shepard will take over now, 2.26 to go. I was able to get the answer, as you heard in the pregame, uh, about whether it was a decision to just go with Cam Dorner from Coach Wright or if it was you know, an injury or just tired from de defense. 
it was just him just saying, hey, I feel like Cam's our guy here to maybe give us a spark, and uh, he did it, obviously, returning that 196 yards for the touchdown. So Coach Wright has had an excellent season, and I've heard a lot of great things from him. Uh, we have Wyatt Pelicano on each week on Wyatt Wednesdays on the sports mix as they run Nazir Russell. He gets across to the 26, wary coming up and making the tackle, but on the sports mix each week we have Wyatt on, and, and an offensive lineman giving praise to the special teams coach and how hard he works says a lot, I feel like, is how often is he really working with the special teams guy, and I think uh, Coach Wright has done an excellent job. Well, as everybody day. knows, the offensive linemen are the smartest guys on the football team. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Seth Morgan looking to throw under some pressure, spins out of it, throws it downfield. It's oh, incomplete, it. intended for Brian Jester. He hits him right between the eight and the two. You got to come up with that. Good job that time by Morgan. That was a gamble, but that was a good throw, one target. He does a good job of making those off schedule throws, and that time just throws a bullet over the middle, like you said. And you got to make the most of those opportunities. You realize that that cuts down really kind of put themselves in a position to score after a big play to their tight end, move the ball down the field. The Rams had the same chance on that play, but just not able to secure that pass. 150 to go in the first half. 3 nothing cuts down. Russell is the back to the right of Morgan as Shepard looking to throw. Morgan throwing far sideline and incomplete off of the shoulder pad of Barry Hill, the intended receiver. And the Rams will be forced to punt. It just nothing going Shepard's way in this first half offensive. And that was a play. It, it was it was weather conditions that affected that play on both ends. One, the quarterback looked like the ball slipped out of his hands. Really didn't have any type of steam on it to get there. And then as the wide receiver is working back to the ball, loses footing, falls down, and the ball hits him in the shoulder pad. So a couple of miscues here on that drive, and a quick three and out for this Rams offense. And you got the ever dangerous Anton Lloyd back to get the punt. And again, the Golden Bears looking to set up with very good field position depending on this return. Lloyd standing inside his own 40-yard line. High snap from Fry. Punt gets away from Barrick just barely as it was nearly blocked, which probably resulted in not the best kick. But at least he got it out considering there's a high snap and pressure. High snap, pressure, and no return. So it's all net. And yeah, you'll take it. Yeah, you'll take it. First and ten now for the Golden Bears with 134 to go in this first half. 3 nothing Kutztown. These two teams had a shootout last year. Remember that? <laughs> we're, we're on a different side of the spectrum this time. This is good. This is going to be a fight in the phone booth today. You never know, though. College football or just any level of football, halftime can change a lot, flow of the game. And sometimes when you get that first score on the board, that kind of loosens things up, changes the dynamic of the game. But the Rams' defense could really use a stop here. Even if you hold them to a field goal, that's definitely not the end of the world, but you don't want to go down 10 nothing heading into halftime, even though you do get the ball to start the second half. So see if the Shepard defense can continue to be stout. And they are on this first play with Davis McNeil. Hey, Grantham was the first one to come up and hit him, and then is finished off by Koma Yao. Slow Ram getting up in the middle of the field. Kevin Kowser, but he's going to shake it off and stay out there, it looks like. Now they're going to run him off now. Robertson will check in for Kowser. And this is a Rams defense. They want to bounce back from last week. We know that they had some difficulties in the passing game, but also in the run game. They were going up against a young running back last week and surrendered 159 yards on the ground last week, averaging 4.7 yards per carry. So they're looking to get back on the right side of things this week by being very stingy on the run here early on. Second and nine, under a minute. Cuts down in no hurry, it appears, but Novak stepping up, looking to run, and he's got some room. Grantham finally gets him out of bounds. Judd Novak, though, being the aggressor with the contact of Dwayne Grantham, and they're jarring back and forth as he takes it for a first down and more into Kutztown territory, into Shepard territory, down to the 45 yard line. And that's something that you like to see out of your young quarterback. Like we mentioned, redshirt freshman going up against the linebacker in Grantham. You know, you want him to be a little bit chippy as they're going out of bounds. And good job by Grantham pulling up on that play. Didn't want to have right. any type of silly penalty over there on that short sideline and possibly give them a, a big penalty 
yardage gain on that play. Yeah, it could have been bad. I mean, anytime you hit anybody laid out of bounds, it's going to be bad because it will be a penalty. But if you hit the quarterback laid out of bounds, then you're, you're probably going to have yeah, a fight. Yeah, you're guaranteed, to, you're guaranteed to get some penalties on that play. So smart play by Dwayne Grantham to let him go once he got out and pass falling incomplete there intended for Makai Gibson. Really haven't called too many of these wide receivers today for the Golden Bears. And again, it was a, you could tell that the, the weather is affecting the footing that time. The quarterback just trying to throw a, a quick hitch to the outside, and the wide receivers are just having a difficult time getting sure footing out there and working back towards the football. Again, it hasn't been as bad as it was originally projected to be, but still rained a ton before the game. Here's the pass intended for Ravnell, and it's caught. Ravnell gets the first down and smartly goes out of bounds into Shepherd territory. Amari Terry was the man to force him out. Now where they're spotting this ball, though, is short. It looked from our angle and from the Kutztown Whoa. coaching staff's angle that he had gotten across that 35-yard line, but they are spotting it at the 36. So it's a third and one for Kutztown. Wow. I think he stepped out right where one of the coaches he, he, is standing. Yeah, in front he went of us out here. at the sticks. But... Nonetheless, third down and one here for the Golden Bears after that spot. Novak on the QB. Keeper has some room inside the 30, inside the 25. Pena coming up and making the tackle. Grantham in there as well. Judd Novak has shown some abilities to run, and in the past, even though they don't see them very often, typically the PSAC has those typical 6'5 quarterbacks that we talk about. These running quarterbacks have given the Rams some issues over the years. And, and it's, they're just so tough to account for because most defenses aren't built to account for a quarterback that has that type of mobility. And then when you spread a team out and then you use that running back that's in sidecar as a lead block, really puts a lot of pressure on those guys in the box. Somebody's going to have to beat their block in order to make the play. And that's really tough because you're spread out. You know Shepard is concerned about getting beat over the top. Not, not a speedy wide receiving core for this Cutstown offense, but they are a lot of veterans. you got a lot of redshirt seniors. you got some grad students out there. So you realize that you have some players that, that have been around the block once or twice, so you want to show them that type of respect, and you don't want to give up a big play that's really going to change things for the game. And Again, that was a good play call that time, spreading out that Shepard defense, and the quarterback able to take it the rest of the way. And Novak showing he's quite scrappy. He's had some troubles here early on, but showing a little bit of fire here to close out the second half. Well, close out the first half, excuse me. First and ten with 30 and a half seconds to go in this first half. 3 nothing Kutztown as they've moved the ball down to the Shepard 23-yard line. Four receivers set for Novak in the offense. Passing play here. Shepard sends just four, gets some pressure. Novak sheds off Baxter, looks to run, and heads out of bounds. Komiyao and Cows are making some contact out of bounds, but not really a late hit. It's just momentum was carrying them. The more, the they more hit each other. Hit too, yeah. <laughs> I don't think they'll, they won't call a penalty on guys beating up on their teammates. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> maybe. So. Novak, again, using his legs to get positive yards. There's only a gain of three, even though he ran a lot to get out of bounds. Ran a lot more yardage than three, I guess I should say. Second down and seven, 21 but, and a half seconds. But, again, he helps the offense get out of that dreaded second and ten. It's just as, a, as an offensive play caller, you're really in handcuffs when you go out there on second and ten because you're kind of forced into a situation where you have to try to run the ball because you don't want to face a third and ten. And right now it looks like Caden Hastie's coming off. Referee's calling him off. I think he's got a little bit of blood that needs to be tended to, so he's got to get wrapped up before he gets back in the game. So Kutztown having to make a change at wide receiver. They stay in the four wide set. Davis McNeil is the back to the right. Husser going in motion, the big tight end. He's actually split out wide on this play. and count, or They look for him, and he can't come up with the pass. Kevin Cows are picking it up, but the official is ruling it an incompletion as it should be ruled. It will be third down. Novak, again, hitting right between the eight and the seven, and he wasn't able to catch the ball cleanly. And the Rams doing a good job of rallying to the football. So once that ball is on the receiver, Rams defenders doing a good job of just jarring that ball loose. 
So third down and seven. They stayed with the four receiver set for Cutstown. 17 seconds to go in this first half. Golden Bears getting ready for a potential field goal attempt. 3-0. Novak looking to throw. Has time. Rolling to his near side. Looking to run. Novak is going to slide out of bounds to avoid a hit from Robertson just short of the first down marker. 8.3 seconds. And Davis go. McNeil was wide open on the backside of the play. The pressure flushed Novak out. He had to go to his left, but Davis McNeil, he was able to leak out of the backfield and drift off to that right sideline, over to that home sideline for the Rams, and there was nobody over there. I'm sure that's going to be something that the coaches are going to point out. That was a big missed opportunity that time by the Golden Bears offense. So one thing that's interesting is Novak is the holder. So you always got to be aware of that if you're Shepard because they could run a fake play if you're holder. But it is a field goal attempt here on fourth and one, at least for now. Cuts down calling the guys over to discuss things. Might have. I think you have to kick it with eight seconds, but they're gonna, oh, they're going to bring on the change for a measurement here. I didn't I, I didn't see a single for who called timeout, so I had figured. I mean, you have a chance depending on how this measurement comes out. Yeah, if it's a first down, you can take one shot, which it might be. Nope. And then they're saying it's just short. It's this much. <laughs> you know, I thought since he gave himself up. It should even maybe be a little bit further back than that spot. I mean, it was close. It's hard to tell when you're going toward the sideline. But since he's – because the rule should be when he starts the slide is where the ball should be spotted. So We've had some uh, questionable spots so far today. Yeah, I mean, Kutztown got a bad one earlier, so if they get a good one here, you know, it evens out, right? Fourth down and one. But, again, Novak is the holder, and now the timeout coming from Shepard. To try to put a little bit of pressure on Dawson Evitz, the 6'1 senior kicker from Auburn, Pennsylvania. Let's go ahead and take a 30 second break. This is Shepard Ants Football TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. 3 0. Cuts down. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. We welcome you back here to Kutztown. Fourth and one. This will be about a 30-yard field goal from the left hatch. Novak gets the hold down. Evitz kick. He's good. And Kutztown extends its lead before halftime to 6 0 with 4.2 seconds left. So if you're the Shepherd side, uh, you hold them to that field goal after they took over around the 44 yard line. Golden Bears get down there, get that field goal. So not the worst thing in the world. Like I said, a six point deficit's not nearly as bad as it feels like 10 would be heading into halftime. And for Cutstown, you're able to come away with some points. You keep the momentum going. You don't want to get that Rams team energized by a big fourth down stop to end the first half. So you take the points, keep everything under control. Now this kickoff unit for Cutstown, they're going to have to be careful because, like we mentioned, this Rams special teams has been playing outstanding football so far this season. So I imagine there's going to be some type of squib or or directional style kick that is really going to limit the opportunity for a big return for this Rams special teams unit. Malachi Brown and Dorner back deep. So as I said, Shepard or Kitsdown going from their own 40-yard line, having to settle for a 30-yard field goal. Our scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. 
Cam Dorner will let it bounce into the end zone and take the touchback. 4.2 seconds, can't do too much with that, so most likely Shepard will maybe run the ball, but even then, I mean, they fumbled the ball a lot in this first half, probably just taking me, but we'll see. Maybe you want to take a shot here, I don't know. Figure cuts down is probably going to be playing off. So a lot of times that Shepard has had success with the big pass plays that have come on double moves with a pump fake or something like that. And with that defense playing off, that like double move is, yeah, is really not going to be an option. So they're just going to take a knee, get out. You know, you've turned the ball over a bunch. You haven't played well, yet you're only down by six points. So no reason get to make the ball a, start starting to There you go. Well. There's no reason to make There's it a bad situation four seconds worse. Left, so Morgan will take that knee, and we will roll into halftime. Our score, Shepard. Nothing. Kutztown, six. We will take a two-minute break. And we were actually hold off on that break. We should be joined by Dylan here momentarily with Rams head coach Ernie McCook. As Coach McCook is uh, talking to an official, I believe, and we'll see if Dylan will be able to get him here. I don't know if Dylan wants to get caught in a crossfire because he's laying into that referee pretty good. I see Dylan walking with him, but he looks very, yeah, very angry, Coach McCook. But Dylan does have him, and he's calmed down, it appears. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's still going at him. Well, now it looks like Coach McCook is ready to talk to Dylan, so Dylan, go ahead and take it away when you're ready. All right, Coach, down here 6 nothing at the half. Some frustration is going on, some weather, adversity. What do you think when you go in there at the half? You know, well, we've done everything that we could do to give this football game away. We need to come out and execute, handle the adversity, and just move forward and play football. Back to you guys. Short and sweet for Murray McCook at the half, 6 nothing. Uh, Shepard trailing Kutztown. Now we'll take our two-minute break, and on the other side of that break, we'll have the halftime show. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Mommy, where does flavor come from? Well, um, when people love food, they cook it on a Traeger grill. Meat, corn, even pie. <laughs> and then the Traeger does the rest which brings everyone to celebrate this beautiful thing that they've created. Because when you share delicious food with your friends, that's the flavor of life. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family. And we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Hi, Cresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is better known and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. We're at the half. Time for a scoring recap, stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team. We welcome you back to Ram Stadium here in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Shepherd trails Kutztown at the half, 6 0. Nick Verzellini and Travis Smith here at the half. Daryl Miller, as well as Matt Miller, our on site producer and cameraman. And down on the sidelines, Dylan Bishop also running a camera for us this afternoon. Again, 6 0. Kutztown 
here at the half. The Rams marching band performing in their 50th season of uh, being a band. So playing some throwbacks, if you can hear it, on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Our halftime show is brought to you by the Mansion Freddy Law Firm in Martinsburg, where it's about seeking justice for you. Go to wvjusticelawyers.com. Travis, uh, first half that didn't have a whole lot of scoring to it, but we did see the two field goals. Shepard, of course, turning the ball over a lot. Cuts down turning it over a lot. Both teams with two turnovers, and neither team really taking advantage of those turnovers. In fact, Right after Shepard got a turnover, they turned it right back to Kutztown. So, been a sloppy game, which is what we kind of expected, but the rain has held off for the most part. Prior to the game, it rained a ton. The wind's starting to pick up a little bit. Uh, obviously, the field's still wet. Ball, probably wet as well. So Still a lot of moisture in the air as well. Yeah, so it's made it tough on the Shepard side of things, but or on the Kutztown side as well, but Kutztown has the lead here at the half. What were kind of your first half thoughts? Well, and you look at, at the weather conditions, it kind of lends itself to the style of play that Kutztown likes to employ. They have two very good running backs. They've been able to use them, this consistently use them, and not have to worry about turning the ball over as far as fumbles. You look conversely on the Shepherd side where they're still trying to feel their way and try to find who's going to be that running back for them on the sideline, and, and so far the fumbles have kept them from achieving that goal, but it, it, it's a reason for both teams to feel pretty good here at halftime. One, for Cutstown, you have the lead. You've come on the road. You've had a tough season so far, but you're on the road. You're able to have a lead going into halftime against a very tough opponent in Shepard. You look at Shepard, yes, a lot of turnovers. Coach McCook not happy with the officials on certain calls, but yet even with all of that bad play, you're down only by six points. You're down only one possession, and you're getting the ball back to begin the second half. So, Still, you have to find something that you want to build on, and the Rams offense has just had a difficult time finding that footing, getting into a rhythm, whereas Cutstown, you think they, they look like they're beginning to settle in a little bit more and get used to the conditions. But, again, you have to look at that Rams defense. They have played some outstanding football here early on, not giving up a lot of big plays, forcing those turnovers, most importantly, pressuring the quarterback. That was something that we talked about early on in the season that was missing from years past. We know about the firepower that they lost on the offensive side of the ball, but being able to get to the quarterback the way they did last year, they really haven't had that this year. They showed a variety of looks last week. Haven't seen that type of variety so far today. They're more concerned about the run than what they are the pass, but they still have been able to get some pressure on the quarterback and force the young quarterback into some questionable decisions. Yeah, the Shepard defense has been phenomenal. I mean, obviously, Kutztown has the shutout on their side, but considering it could be a lot worse when Shepard's turned it over and where on the field they've turned it over. So uh, definitely some good things as we get some first half stats brought to us. And we will now go over some of those stats. Our first half stats are brought to you by Larry DeMarco at Modern Realty Results. If you're looking for a home in the tri-state, they have you covered. We'll give you the Kutztown stats here at the half. Judd Novak, seven carries. For 39 yards, Davis McNeil, 7 carries for 15 yards. Jordan Davis, 8 carries for 14 yards. That has totaled for Kutztown 23 rushes already in that first half for 70 yards. On the Shepherd side running the football, it's been 13 attempts for 47 yards. Malachi Brown's been their best runner. The problem is he has two fumbles in that first half, 8 carries for 44 yards. Five and a half yards per a carry. Nazir Russell, three carries for six yards. So the Shepherd side of things not running the ball as effective as Kutztown. Kutztown had some big runs, uh, but 23 for 70. That's not bad on the Shepherd side at all. So seven of 16 for Judd Novak, passing two, inter- two interceptions, 53 yards. Seth Morgan, five of 12, 41 yards and two interceptions as well. Ravnell, three catches for eight yards. One catch for Husser, who's not known as a receiving tight end, had just one catch heading into the game for 32 yards. Caden Hasty, one for 16. Cameron Dorner for Shepard, two for 19. Malachi Brown, two for 12. And one for Dustin Fisher for 10 yards. Tackle leaders 
are Tyler Worry with three tackles, or I'm sorry, two and a half. Cam Wolf with two, Clancy with two, Doga at, with two as well. Anilio Pena has led the first half for both teams, seven and a half tackles for him. Comey out with three and a half, Dwayne Grantham with three and a half, and Bednarski with three. Overall, Travis, it's the stats pretty much tell us what we expected. The Rams just 88 yards of total offense on just 25 plays. Kutztown has had the ball majority of the first half. Shepard's only held it for 9 minutes and 50 seconds. The Golden Bears have had it for 20 minutes and 10 seconds, running 39 plays for 123 yards. Both teams doing terrible on third down. 2 of 11 is Kutztown. 2 of 6 is Shepard, so not as bad, but still not great. I mean, Kutztown's had the ball the majority of that first half. Maybe Shepard can replicate that in the second half and uh, take the lead. I think that could be one of those big things. they got to hold on to the ball better. And Cutstown not able to get into the end zone, but they have been two of three as far as a red zone scoring chances. So they have been efficient as far as just being able to come away with some points. And in a nip and tuck game like this, you'll be able, you take what you can get, and that's all they've been able to get so far. So hats off to that Rams Shepherd defense. hasn't even visited them. Yes, they have not. So they have to try to find something. Again, I think working over the middle of the field, I think is going to be important for the Rams because you're just not going to be able to throw the ball to the sidelines with velocity with this type of weather going on. And again, a game like this, you're a big play away from the game, either really changing complexion or just being blown wide open. So I don't think you want to risk throwing the ball to the sidelines when you have uh, the, the secondary play the way you have with cuts down. So I don't think you want to tempt fate. Again, I think you got to try to find, again, continue to try to find an answer at running back and try to create some of those plays where, like, the little play action plays and drags underneath where Seth Morgan's able to get out of the pocket and, and, and find, find a check down wide receiver. That is something he's very good at doing, and it's something where he's not going to have to risk the ball to the sideline. So Right now, those coaches at halftime, they're going to be earning their paychecks because this is the type of game where, like, when your money plays aren't working and you have to dig a little bit deeper and get creative, that's where that, that, that's where you really test the metal of a coach's ability. So anxious to see what type of adjustments that these coaching staff going to make coming out here in the second half. Let's go ahead and take another two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll send it to Colin McLaughlin, who's back in the studios. He'll have halftime scoreboard update for you from around the PSAC and the rest of college football. Nine minutes to go. Colin on the halftime clock. We'll be back in two minutes with McLaughlin on the other side of this break in the scoreboard update. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505.
Welcome into the halftime scoreboard show on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Colin McLaughlin here for you as at the half it is Cuts Town leading six nothing on Shepherd in a game of turnovers on both sides. It's just been Cuts Town though, the Golden Bears capitalizing with two field goals on the turnover. So let's now get some scores for around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference for you. It's a few games currently in action. A minute 38 to go in the second quarter. It is 16-0 Millersville on top of Westchester. Another game at the half between California University of Pennsylvania and Edinburgh, it is Cal U leading at the half by a score of 7-3. to three. And then the last score that you see here still in the first quarter and still scoreless between Lockhaven and East Stroudsburg with 6.23 to go in the first quarter. That one deadlocked scoreless between the two. Let's switch over here, get some other scores for you in the first quarter with 4.52 to go. It is Clarion right now on top of Gannon. 17 to nothing on the road. A scoreless first quarter as of right now between Bloomsburg and Shippensburg as well with 537 remaining in that first quarter. It looks like IUP and Mercyhurst just getting underway a little bit behind on the stats there. Kickoff for that was scheduled for 1 and then scheduled for 3 o'clock. It will be Slippery Rock at Seton Hill. Those are your Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference games going on right now. Let's get some scores from around the NCAA Division I Top 25 realm at the half. It's number two, Michigan, leading by just a touchdown over Rutgers, 14-7. Two minutes, 12 seconds to go in the second quarter. Right now, Clemson on top of number four, Florida State, 17 to seven as Clemson has just scored to extend that lead to 17-7. So you can check that on ABC if you want to in between here for this Shepherd Cutstown game as Florida State on upset alert potentially. Minute 47 to go in the second quarter. It's number 16, Oklahoma, leading Cincinnati 10 to 3. And those are the only games currently in action. I'll get some more later on here in our post-game scoreboard show. But for now, we're going to step aside, take a, another two-minute break here as we are at the half between Shepard and Kudstown on the other side of that break. We'll send it back to the game for the second half where it's Kudstown 6, Shepard nothing. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a new or used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back and forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How can I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm John Everson, Private Wealth Advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. 
Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. We welcome you back to Shepherdstown, West Virginia, here at Ram Stadium. 6 0. Cuts down Golden Bears on top of the Shepherd University Rams as we get start set, I should say, for the second half kickoff. Shepherd gets the ball first to start the second half. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us. Matt and Daryl Miller on site, as well as Dylan Bishop, Colin McLaughlin, who you just heard from back in the studio, doing a great, great job back there. Everybody's doing a great job, Travis. Even you. Hey, I have my moments. <laughs> I have my moments. <laughs> Six nothing our score here right before halftime, Travis, as we uh, get set for the second half. Shepard, it feels like they need to come out in this first drive and really set the tone for the second half and potentially if they don't score, it's going to continue to feel like a lot of the first half. I feel like a touchdown drive would potentially flip the momentum towards Shepard and, and get them going. I, and I think it's something where the, the, the Rams offense – you know that the defense is going to be worried about what you have to present on the outside as far as your wide receivers. So I think you might have to use those wide receivers in a game like today as decoys. You want to clear things out and maybe start doing some check down passes to your tight ends or your running backs out of the backfield. That way you're not risking the ball and you're playing to the strength of your quarterback, Seth Morgan. Like we mentioned, he does a good job of making those off schedule throws, checks down, check downs to the running backs and tight ends. So play to his strength, protect the ball. I don't think you can go out and just line up and try to mash it on first down because you really don't have that type of running back in the backfield so maybe just try to get something jump started maybe even change up some tempo where you go and you're not huddling up or taking your time you're more trying to speed things up maybe you can get some momentum going that way so just a variety of options for that Rams offense to try to get things on track here in the second half but as far as the Golden Bears are concerned they've played super stout on defense turning the ball over and the offense has done just enough to give it the lead, but they still need to play with a sense of urgency because you're only one play away from being in behind the Rams offense. I think on the Shepard side of things, it would be good to see here to start the second half, get those wide receivers involved that have made so many plays for you so far this season. Jeremiah Taylor has no catches in halftime. Cam Dorner has just two. Dorner's been such a big part of the offense the last two weeks since coming back from injury. As him and Malachi Brown go back deep, it'll be interesting to see, too, what Shepard does at the running back position. Will they just keep with Russell because Brown's had his fumbling issues, or are they going to give him that confidence boots of giving him an op- another opportunity? I think in terms of explosiveness, you really need him on the field. It's just he's got to take care of the football. And it may be something where, like, like we mentioned, just you want to throw him the ball out of the backfield. Maybe something where just him lining up and running the ball might not be what you want to do here in the second Well, here half. goes Cam Dorner, so explosive. Takes a shot at the 25-yard line. A flag comes flying in. If this is on Shepard, Coach McCook will not be happy. Based on what we saw heading <laughs> yeah. into halftime. Eden Johnson with the tackle for Cutstown, the 5'10", 195-pound redshirt freshman. It's from a Philadelphia PA. block in the back against Shepard, so that's going to back him up. So we talked about how Coach McCook was uh, working the refs right there going into halftime. And sure call like you like you just said, not going to make him happy coming out. And, again, you see this Rams special teams unit, and you'll have that. When you have success as far as returns on kickoff return or punt returns, sometimes those – players out there they want to make a play for a teammate so sometimes they'll they'll cross the line just trying to make that extra block that's going to spring their teammate for a big play so sometimes you know that's going to come with the territory when you start making big plays on the special teams our second half kickoff is brought to you by ollie's vip Northside, the best local spot to catch sports or hang out with friends stop by 36 veronica drive in martinsburg ollie's vip will see you for the game they start with a wide receiver screen to barry hill and hill Gets it out to about the 18-yard line. We'll bring up second down for the Rams. And Hill, after starting out the first game of the season having a big game, has really been quiet in the subsequent games. really only having one catch per game after that season opener. So maybe he has an opportunity to get more involved. And, again, the Rams have, have a great options at the wide receiver position. Malachi Brown is the back, and they will give it to him. 
Brown running forward, has the first down. Wolf coming up and making the tackle for Kutztown. Initially coming up and making the stop there was Earl Valls. And it'll be first down, Shepard, as they move it, move the sticks here. Second half just getting started between Kutztown and Shepard. 13.50 to go in this third quarter. Cam Dorner back on the field. He's the receiver to the far side. Taylor to the near. And they'll run Brown up the middle. He's got a big hole. Malachi Brown in space across the 40. Brown all the way across the 45-yard line. Cam Wolf comes up and makes the tackle. But that's what Malachi can do when he has the ball in his hands. And that's why he's continuing to get the opportunity at running back despite the fumbles. Nothing fancy, just a power play right up the middle. Wyatt Pelicano pulling around, leading up onto that play side guard. And Dustin Fisher doing a good job with that kick out block. Malachi Brown showing some patience, hitting that hole, picking up a big gain here in the second half. First and ten, they'll run Brown off that left side. Runs a little bit of room before being stacked up by Kutztown. Looked like Drew Henser coming up and make the, making the tackle from the safety position. We have a flag, though, in the backfield which most likely against the offense, they're going to wave it off. So no flag on the play. I didn't really see anything, so it makes sense. First and, or I should say second down now for Shepard. Dorner and Taylor flip sides. Fisher in the H-back position. Now Dorner going in motion from right to left. Play action. Looking underneath and incomplete intended for Jeremiah Taylor. Looked like they wanted Cam Dorner on that wheel route down the far sideline, but it was covered well by Kutztown's Justin Harris. Again, that secondary, it's a bunch of veterans on that back end for Kutztown, and you could see it in their play that time, not taking the bait. And they're staying back. They realize that the only chance that the Rams really have to beat them over the top is if they bite on a double move. So you see those corners are playing very disciplined not to bite on that initial move and just making that quarterback beat them with tremendous throws. Third down and eight. Voles is avoided by Morgan. Morgan throws incomplete intended for Barry Hill. And Shepard should be forced to punt here now on fourth down and eight. So the Rams get a big run from Malachi Brown, but can't do anything with it. And Shepard will now punt. Bowles, he has had his name called several times here in today's contest. The 6'1", 280-pound redshirt senior, also hailing from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Just did enough just to get the quarterback off of his platform and make him get outside the pocket. Cuts down, bring the pressure again on the punt. Barracks punt bounces in favor of the Golden Bears. A flag coming in here looked like, looked like there was a scuffle between yeah, two Adaga and for Shepard, that was Mujahid Johnson. And into a scuffle there in the middle of the play. Oh, holding on cuts down. I guess I had no <laughs> on the <laughs> yeah. officials. Yeah, that's fine. The bar fight in the middle of the field, that's cool. We're going to look for the whole thing. But there was a hold. He <laughs> grabbed his jersey <laughs> that's for where a we, second. <laughs> that's where we draw the line. Good to see the officials <laughs> seeing the important stuff here as they move the ball backwards. 12-22 to go. In the third quarter, it could have just been, hey, both guys were at fault there. and They didn't throw a pod show, whatever. Ball moves inside the, or that could have been where the hold was for all we know. I didn't, I didn't really, I just saw the scuffle at there the end. Some good, but, some good grappling techniques on display out there at midfield. First and 10 from the 13-yard line for the cuts down Golden Bears. Novak in the gun. Pistol formation. Davis McNeil is the back. Ravnell going in motion. They'll run Davis McNeil up the middle, and he lowers that shoulder. It's a hard run. Pena coming up to finish it off, but I think Harold O'Neill 
I'm sorry, Christian McDowell made the tackle, but he was more so ran over and just kind of dragged him to the ground. And, and this is the type of game that, that really lends itself to Daryl Davis McNeil's style of run. You know, not big flashy type of runner, not going to break big long runs, but he is the guy that you can just continue to feed the ball and he can get you to three and four yards throughout the game. And that's just going to set up his counterpart in Jordan Davis to gash you for the big runs. But just a tailor made game today for Davis McNeil. Davis going in motion, second and eight, two yards on the carry. Novak looking to throw for Davis and incomplete. It seems like Kutztown may have some injuries in its wide receiving core in terms of its depth because I noticed earlier when we had the situation when uh, Hasty had to come out, they split their tight end out wide, and we've seen a lot of Davis running wide receiver. I mean, some of these plays are designed for him, but it does seem like they haven't had a complete rotation of wide receivers. Maybe they just only have confidence in a few guys, but just something I noticed in that first half. Third down and eight from their own 15 for the Golden Bears. Ravnell, the receiver to the far side. Shepard shows blitz now backs off here on third and eight. Novak steps up, now looks to roll to the right. Under pressure and throws. Hauled in on that far sideline. It's going to be close to a first down. And that was, uh, Shepard was lucky not to get a penalty on that play. The player ran into a coach on the sideline. Again, there's not a lot of space in between the sidelines and the stands over there. So it's kind of tough to maneuver over there, but it will be fourth down. That was Shepard fortunate not to come away with a penalty on that one. Kind of a unbelievable play from Novak. Yeah, has, did a good job of just finding something. Again, giving this punter a a little bit more room to operate. Like we mentioned, he is a very capable punter, averaging 42 yards per attempt in the first half. Punt is fielded by Miles Greer. Greer, we know he's explosive. The wall Across set up. midfield. Greer down the sideline and brought down at the 25. If Shepard scored on that. That is as pretty as it gets. There was a wall of blockers over there, a wall of blue over there, creating a lane for Greer to get to the sidelines. He was the Greer was the one in week one. He was the man in week one that really broke things open for this Rams ball club. And that time, setting the Rams up with excellent field position on that return, but just excellent blocking that time by that Rams special teams unit. I mean, you don't think that you're going to see four return touchdowns in a season let alone four straight weeks, but nearly broke another one, did Shepard, and the offense set up perfectly at the 25-yard line of Kutztown. Morgan pumps once, looks like a miscommunication, and just has to throw it away. I think Justin Harris kind of spooked him on that play. He shows that he's going to be in bump and run coverage early on in the play, and then as the quarterback gets into his cadence, he bails out. So I think it may have been something where they wanted to do that double move, but because Harris backed off and kind of threw off the communication, like you said, kind of a miscommunication over there inside as to where the quarterback was going to go, and luckily that time for the Rams, just Seth Morgan makes the safe play, throws it in the dirt, and lives to fight another day. Second and ten, they have to run, and they do with Malachi Brown, and Brown has a big hole up the gut inside the 15-yard line. Kutztown didn't look ready for it, even with it being a second and ten, and Shepard in the red zone now inside the 20. First down on the 10-yard carry. Again, nothing fancy, just a simple power play right up the middle. You follow those big guards on the move. You got that kick out blocked by Fisher. And Malachi Brown was able to do the rest. Brown the back behind Morgan, and they'll feed him again. He stutter Ooh. steps in the hole and takes a shot from Nigel Wilson. And again, very close to putting the ball on the ground. Two hands on the ball until you get past the line of scrimmage. That should just be the golden rule at this point in the game because Brown is one fumble away from having going the witness protection program. It has not been a good day for him, and the coaches are giving him a very good opportunity, showing a lot of faith by giving him the ball here in the second half, but you cannot risk the ball like that again. Halfback stretch with Malachi. He doesn't find much room, driven out of bounds on that far side by Doka. And it will bring up a third down. 
And Doga, you can still see he, he's favoring that shoulder. He laid that big hit on Dorner earlier. And Adoga stepping in for the talented C.J. Brown. Gain of just one on the play. Brings up a third and nine with just over nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Six nothing cuts down. Morgan. Play action. Roll into the right. Morgan dumps it down to Dustin Fisher. He couldn't make the catch, and it's incomplete. Good and play now. call. It just Fisher got to come up with that one. That time, Dorner was a little bit more of the decoy on that play. He was trying to clear things out. And Fisher would have had a lane to turn the ball up, but, again, not able to catch the ball cleanly. And today's slippery conditions have been have, have wreaked havoc on the efficiency of this Rams offense. Well, even with the drop, it looks like a penalty going against Shepard. So the penalty is declined. declined. Probably just... You rather have the field goal here than give them another opportunity to get the first down, but I could see potentially accepting yeah. it to move them back. But you don't want to give another opportunity. Yeah, you don't want to give that another opportunity. Yeah, you, there, 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 no shortage of explosive athletes on the side of the ball, on the offensive side of the ball for Shepard. So take the ball out of their hands and limit what they can do. Thirty-one yarder for Bozik, and it is good. James Bozik. <laughs> Makes the 31-yard field goal. Our score, Kutztown 6, Shepard 3, 8.48 to go in this third quarter. The Rams are on the board. We'll take a 30-second break. When we return, we'll have more Shepard Rams football. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. So after the Miles Greer punt return sets up Shepard, on the 25-yard line, the Rams have to settle for a 31-yard field goal. James Bozick kicks it through the uprights. It's 6-3 to three now, our score. The Rams will kick it away. Your scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Bozick will drill that one down to the 11-yard line. Here goes Lloyd. Antoine, I'm sorry, that's Ravnell on the return out to about the 34-yard line and good field position here for the Golden Bears offense. Judd Novak, the redshirt freshman quarterback, has had his ups and downs today, but it's 6-3. to three. Golden Bears on top, 8-42 to play in this third period. Rams young, defense back on the field. And the young quarterback showed some resilience in that first half, like you mentioned, going out with a shaky start, turning the ball over. But once he was able to run and, and pick up some yards with his legs that helped him get settled down and get some confidence going, and you're starting to see this Cutstown offense get into a little bit more of a groove. Just offense has just been hard to come by for both ball clubs today. And both defenses getting after it. Here's a pass complete on the near side to Ravnell. He makes a nice move. Ravnell across midfield brought down by JT Comey out into Shepard territory to the 44 or 43 yard line. Big play there as um, you know get the ball to one of your playmakers in space. Ravnell had a few drops in that first half coming through with a big play there. Again, using that play action pass, uh, waggle action to get the quarterback out on the edge. You realize you have a mobile quarterback, uses athleticism to get him some easy throws underneath the defense and let those athletes make plays on the outside. Shepard gets oh. a free hit on the quarterback. Omari Terry come flying through with the sack. He has had himself a great day for Shepard. An interception and the sack. And that's something that we've seen with this Rams defense over the years. There's usually somebody that emerges as that emotional leader on the side of the defense. And I think the player that has really taken that job this year has been Amari Terry. He, he, play, he makes a variety of plays, has an unusual position where not only does he have a lot of responsibilities as far as pass coverage, but he's not afraid to get up in the box and make some plays in the backfield. And that time, that's what happened on the 
Safety blitz getting into the quarterback's face and taking him down for a big sack on first down. Second and 17 after the seven-yard loss. Novak throws in the flat complete. Get those seven yards back and out of bounds. Harrison coming up to drive him out. And Davis doesn't get many catches. Coming into today's game, only had three catches so far in the year. That'll make four. Last week had one catch for seven yards versus Mercyhurst. Third and ten, ball back to the 44-yard line. 6.40 to go in the third. Six to three. Cuts down on top of Shepard. The Rams have gotten the pressure today. That's been something they were missing through the first two and a half games, it felt like. In the second half, Shepard started to blitz and get a little bit more pressure on Davis Black last week against Cal. They got pressure on Novak here. Kowser's in there. He spins out of it. Grantham comes. They throws incomplete. What a play by Judd Novak for a first down. It's hauled in by Jordan Davis. Again, the young quarterback showing some fire in his play, rolling out to his right. And that's one of the plays where the coaches are saying no the entire time until it turns out right, then they say yes. On that play, Novak able to throw the ball back across his body to the middle of the field. But Davis doing a good job just showing some veteran savvy, finding that open spot in the middle of the field, settling down, showing the quarterback his numbers, and was able to reel in that catch. And right now, you just see cuts down. They're, they're, they just seem to be a lot more comfortable operating in the conditions today as opposed to that Rams offense. First and 10 from the 27. Grantham came on that delayed blitz to cover Novak running, and that kind of opened up that play. Davis McNeil up the gut down to the 21-yard line. That's a tough offensive set for a defense to really try to account for. You have both of those running backs in the backfield. They can attack you in a variety of ways. That time they motion Davis out of the backfield in hopes of pulling somebody out of the box. And when you pull somebody out of the box, that's going to open up that lane in the middle for Davis McNeil to pick up a big chunk on first down. Now you got access to your whole playbook here on second and short. You can either try to go ahead and pound it again and set it yourself up for a third in short situation, or you can go ahead and take a shot, maybe catch the defense peeking in the backfield. Second down and three for Kutztown after the seven-yard pickup on first down. Man going in motion. Novak throws complete underneath. It's Ravnell again. Ravnell brought down by Terry and Miles Greer, short of the first down marker. 4.25 to go in this third quarter. Six to three, Kutztown on top of Shepard. And the Golden Bears are driving. They'll bring in their power formation. Listed as a tight end is Gino Campanga, but he is 6'1", 270 pounds. So a lot of beef up front. (laughs) Also got Davis McNeil, so third and two. Not a lot of mystery to what the Golden Bears are going to want to try on this play. Or at least make you think they're going to try. Novak will give it to Davis McNeil. It's a big hole, first down and more. Good blocks up front. That time, Adam Conklin, the big right tackle, was able to wash down the defense. And, again, just a zone look. You see that a lot with that Shepard offense. A zone look up front. You have that tight end. It's going to kick out on the backside. And Davis McNeil just showing that ability as a veteran running back to show some patience, let those big uglies up front do all the dirty work, and he was able to find that lane and pick up a big first down for this Golden Bears offense. 3.25 to go in the third. 6-3 to three cuts down, driving again into – Shepard territory down to the 13-yard line. Little go. Ooh, Mr. Davis McNeil. He had a hole, but I think he ran he to ran the wrong side. Own, and he ran into his own guy. Yeah, it looked like he ran into Trey Bernstein, the offensive lineman. And that kind of led him to bounce it when he, if he cut it up, had a touchdown. But since he ran into his own guy, that maybe not a touchdown, but definitely – down to inside the five-yard line, had a big hole. They have Bernstein listed as 6'1", 275, but that may be an old stat. That's a that's a big fella down there. You think he grew in college? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Possible. <laughs> yeah, that, that nutrition program is kicking in. <laughs> Second down here with the run. 
Again with Davis McNeil, JT, or I'm sorry, Dwayne Grant from that time coming over to make that tackle. He he, he was an eyelash away from making that tackle in the backfield, and Davis McNeil, known as a pounder in between, but that time was showed some quick feet, able to get outside and make something happen, but that play was blown up in the backfield. Good penetration up front by the Rams, just that time Davis McNeil was just able to make something out of nothing. We third and about four. For Kutztown, two minutes to go in this third quarter. Three receivers on the field. Ravnell, the receiver to the near side. He's been their go-to guy today. In the slot is Makai Gibson. And on the far side is Hasty. For third and four, 145 to go in the third. Ravnell going in motion. Davis McNeil is the back. Novak looking to throw. Under some pressure. Steps up in the pocket. Throws over the middle to a wide open tight end for the touchdown. It's Nick Lovenguff. Lovenguff hauling it in. The 6'2", 235-pound junior from Downingtown, Pennsylvania, extends the Kutztown lead to 12-3. Only three catches for Lovenguff so far this year. Two of them have been touchdowns. All he does is score touchdowns? (laughs) He's going for the Michael McCook Award this year. 12-3, our score, extra point pending from Dawson Evitz, and his extra point is up, and good. So Kutztown has built a 10-point lead over Shepard at 13-3, 1.37 to go in this third quarter. We'll take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Finds itself... Down 13 to 3, 137 to go in this third quarter. A lot of football still left to be played. Nick Verzellini alongside me, Travis Smith. Matt and Daryl Miller on site. And as well as Dylan Bishop. Back in the studio, Colin McLaughlin, 137 to go in this third quarter. Shepard finds itself down 10. They will get the football after the Lovenguff touchdown reception. Big throw from Novak. He made some great plays on that drive. Of course, the throw he had to Jordan Davis over the middle after avoiding some sacks, avoiding some pressure there. Uh, You see why they like him as a redshirt freshman, why they decide to go with him as the quarterback. Dorner will feel it from the end zone and just take a knee. But Novak, some good things on that drive, able to make some big throws down the field, avoid some sacks, gives you a little bit of mobility in the quarterback spot. And Lovin' Guff coming away with the touchdown. Our scoring drive summaries are brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. So this now becomes a crucial drive for Shepard. They have a 10-point deficit to work with. Ball on the 25-yard line. And this offense just hasn't looked very good consistently. Had some good runs on that last drive, but eventually cuts down, held them up. For Shepard into a field goal try. Morgan running Malachi Brown. No room. Nigel Wilson as well as Wary in on that tackle. And it's tough. I mean, you, you have a, a four wide receiver set. You're out there in 10 personnel, so you're really not able to get any type of punch up front. And cuts down, they're not taking the bait. They're daring the Rams to throw the ball down the field. They're daring the Rams to throw it to the sidelines. And right now, the Rams, I mean, having turned the ball over, really not wanting to try to take that bet and just trying to pound it in the middle. But but nothing doing, and this cuts down defense has been very stingy today. Morgan looking to throw under pressure from Wilson. Still under pressure, and he is sacked. Nigel Wilson bringing him down. It will be a loss of one on the play. And bring up a third and 11 or 12, depending on where that previous spot was. I think it's going to be a third and 12 for Shepard. And the, the Rams, I think they got to do something where they attack the seam. 
because right now those safeties are bailing out, trying to take away the stuff over the top. You know they have great coverage on the back end. So have something in there where you have a, a slot or a wing. You need to try to attack that seam because there's going to be a void there in the middle of the field. I just don't think working the sidelines is going to be an option today against this defensive group. Morgan looking to throw. Has time this time. Rolling around. Keeps his eyes downfield and now looks to run. And I think he's, yeah, he's short of the first down marker. So again, Shepard will be forced to punt. He went out of bounds, but the clock is still rolling. That so. Golden Bears, that secondary unit, they have been airtight today. Down there big, safety, and Brown, but it has been next man up type of mentality for that Golden Bears defensive unit, and they have played excellent football today. Granted, the weather conditions are on their side, but still with the type of explosive athletes that Shepard has on the outside, it's still you can walk away feeling pretty good about yourself that you were able so far here in the early goings to keep them under control. So fourth quarter will begin on the other side of this 60-second break. It is Kutztown 13, Shepard 3. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to call my parents. Dad, come over. The first gets done. The Traeger Connect Experience. Everything you need for epic flavor. And then some. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Let it bounce as the Rams force upon it. He touched the ball, and it's loose. Rams got it. Why would you touch that? Shepard, I believe, has it. It's a scrum for the football. Like, who knows how many times that ball is going to change hands underneath the pile, but it looked like the Rams Shepherd were able to get on top of it. dive on top of it initially, but Kutztown may have been able to get it back as the official still trying to sort things out. And a lot I of see times. Somebody, I saw one official point toward the Golden Bears. But no official signal. Shepard running out with the football. Anton Lloyd. A lot of times when you're trying to make a play, that usually results in mistakes, and that's what it was. Lloyd sensing that the, they had an opportunity to really impose their advantage and just reaching down. It was weird. Like he went for it just kind of lackadaisical and just touched the ball with his momentum carrying him away from the ball and just giving the Rams just an excellent opportunity to get back into this ball game. A uncharacteristic mistake from the second team all PSAC defensive back. Very good returner. Not sure why he would even tempt fate on that play. Brody Carroll running out with the football for Shepard on the recovery. I have no, yeah, it almost looked like he felt like the play was already over and he was just going to pick it up and hand it to the official because he didn't really go after it aggressively. It's a weird situation there on the punt return, but Shepard will certainly take it. First down and 10 for the Rams. They have to take advantage now. Ball on the 25, batted in motion. Morgan looking to throw. Morgan dumps it down underneath. Cordell batted in space and Hutto. Cordell inside the 10, first down and more for the freshman wide out. It's the first time that the Rams home stands have really gotten into this game and just an opportunity for the Rams to really just claw their way back into this contest. Down to the nine-yard line, so it's a first and goal for Shepard. They're in the red zone. How about that? Morgan in the shotgun form or pistol formation. Malachi Brown is the back now moving to the right of Morgan, so it is the shotgun with trips stacked up to the far side. They'll run Malachi. Brown oh, lost the ball again. And Kutztown had to have fallen on that. There's several Golden Bears around it, unless it bounced back to Brown, which I think it may have. No, Kutztown coming up saying they have it. And the Golden Bears do have the football. Shepard with another turnover. 
Brown is slow to get up. It's been a tough day for Malachi. And he all it was, he just ran into his own teammate on that play. He ran into the back of Wyatt Pelicano. I think it was actually James Bell. Was what James I had Bell? Saw. I think the center actually pulled on that one. Okay, so running. And, and, now, granted, that is a big back to run into, 6'2", 275. But Malachi Brown, he has just been playing in quicksand today. Just the more he struggles, the deeper it gets. And putting the ball on the ground that many times, that's going to be tough. tough to keep your job. That's tough. That's that. That's your only job as a running back. <laughs> that is your only job. You, you there's a lot of plays. Respond. That's your only job is to hold on to the football, and he has not done very well at that today. It was a struggle two weeks ago against Edinburgh. Last week, Shepard did a good job. They held on to the ball, didn't put it. And it wasn't just Brown, by the way. Nazir Russell had issues with it. Uh, Cam Dorner had a fumble. But this week, Brown has struggled. And, I mean, the conditions are a factor, but you got to find ways to hold on to the football. So. Because, and you look at cuts down, they're playing in the same conditions that the Rams yeah. are, and they have not fumbled the ball. Now, granted, the running backs are in different points of their career where you have, like, seasoned veterans for cuts down, and you have – Malachi Brown, who's a new player to the position. Seven-yard pickup, 13.30 to go, and that was a deflating play. This place has gone completely quiet for Shepard. Davis McNeil on the carry, up the middle again, first down. And at halftime, Kutztown had held the ball for over 20 minutes. And now it's got to be, I mean, this defense has been on the field, it feels like, the entire game. And you kind of lead me to my next thought. Now you're starting to see the benefit of pounding the ball throughout the game. You might only get two or three yards in the first three quarters of the game, but if you stick with it and continue to run the ball, now you're going to start getting those four and five. You're going to start getting those chunk plays here in the fourth quarter. When you have a big banger like Davis McNeil, now it's money time. You feed the ball to your big running back and let him chew up clock and chew up turf. It was 23 carries for 70 yards in the first half. Kutztown now just keeping going with it. Davis McNeil into the secondary across the 40-yard line. I mean, 23 for 70 is almost a game, but it would have been a really great game from the Shepard defense stopping the run. They haven't struggled. It's just at this point, like you said, Travis, with the time of possession going all toward Kutztown, fourth quarter, they have a 10-point lead. Shepard has to be feeling a little bit gassed on defense. And, and you look at the game that Davis McNeil had against the Rams last year, 27 carries, 67 yards, 2.5 yards per carry. Again, nothing extraordinary about that, but what it does, it sets the defense up. It wears them down, sets up your play-action pass, and it pays dividends in the fourth quarter. Big hit that time. Yeah, Davis McNeil down on the play. That was Grantham coming up. Yeah, it like Big hit. Dwayne has... Definitely looked a lot like himself today. Shepard trying to get it going. Amari Terry trying to fire his guys up, knowing that they need to make a play, need to get a stop somehow, some way, even with Kutztown killing this clock today and been on the field a long time. But the defense has made stops before, but you can't allow another score here and more clock to burn. So it will be second down and eight from the 43-yard line. Two backs in the backfield for the Golden Bears. Davis will slip out. Novak will throw and fire complete. Hauled in on that one to Luke Zasbo, the 6'3 redshirt freshman from Sparta, New Jersey. It's a first down for the Golden Bears into Shepard territory down to the 49-yard line. And good play design that time by the Golden Bears. They send the running back out in the flat, kind of makes that defense spread out. They got to come up and account for him. He is a solid receiver out of the backfield, and that opens up the gap for the big wide receiver to pull that in. He does. He's towering over everybody over there. 13-3, to cuts down on top, 10-30 to go in the fourth quarter. They will hand it off to Jordan Davis. He cuts it back to the far side. Davis gets a block from his quarterback, Novak, I believe, was out there trying to throw him a block at least. Gets it down to the 45. It's only about a gain of four or five on the play, but Jordan Davis looked like he almost had a huge hole to that outside. Young quarterback sticking his face in there trying to get a block for his, trying to spring a big play for his running back. Second and six. Ten minutes to go in the fourth quarter. The Shepard defense... Could use a stop. Rams trail by 10. 
clock continues to roll. Neither of the play clocks are working, so not certain how much time left on the play clock. They're going to milk Kutztown. as much as they can at this point in the ball game. They'll run it off the right side with Davis. Grantham in. Grantham again. On the tackle. Looked like there was going to be more yards to be gained there up the middle. But, again, that Rams defense, you might catch them out of position initially, but they're, they're, they're so smart. They're, they're so have such a high football IQ, and they're so athletic that if you do catch them out of position initially, they're usually fast enough and smart enough to make that adjustment and get back into position. That time, like you mentioned, you're, we're starting to see the Grantham that, that, that we saw last year flying around, making plays. Oh, Shepard moved up front. Are they going to say that Kutztown went first or if it was encroachment? As both linemen moving there, it looked like number All 64, on the defense. Billy Everett jumped as well. But, yeah. Good hard count by the young the quarterback. From that Shepard D line. And, and that was like, huge. Third and yeah. four. You hit him with that. And that's tough. They're probably running the ball. And you can, you know, four yards is a lot to get on a third down run when yeah. everybody's expecting it. But now you give them a free first down and first and ten now. Nine minutes to go in this one from the 43. All of a sudden, Shepard, after its best performance of the season offensively, has had its worst performance here today in a very long time. But the defense has stepped up and played well. They've just been yes. out there all day. The defense has played great, but you need it may points. not be you, enough. Yeah, you need points to win. 8.37 here with Davis running the ball. Davis meeting Anilio Pena. He has had himself a great day. A big block that time by Tyreek Husser coming across. 6'3", 230-pound senior from Woodstown, New Jersey. Second down, gain of about two. Actually, they'll say four, second and six. And Davis did a good job of reading his block because when Husser was coming across, that was designed to be a kickout block, but the defender darts down inside. Husser is able to log him, and then Davis is able to bounce it outside and pick up a couple yards on first down. Like we mentioned, you just want to avoid second and ten as much as you can because that really gives the defense a huge advantage as to what you're going to call, what you're forced to call in that type of situation. So running off the right side with Davis McNeil, Robertson pushing him out of bounds. Our fourth quarter brought to you by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361 as well as the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing. 13-3, 7.25 to go in this fourth quarter. Kutztown just running the ball down the Rams' throat here late with Shepard. Just being on the field a long time in this ballgame. Third and six, though. This is an opportunity to get off. We'll see if Kutztown will go to the air. Trust their young quarterback or keep it on the ground with Davis McNeil. They will throw on third and six. Novak pumps once, looks far sideline and incomplete intended for Ravnell. He didn't trust it. It was there. They did a corner to the sidelines. You had the matchup that you wanted. Your wide receiver, your wide receiver, excuse me, matched up on a safety. And he had a big window to squeeze it in there, but looking to make the safe throw, he did throw it towards the sidelines where either his receiver was going to catch it or was going to go out of bounds, and that time was going out of bounds. The only negative of that play is that you do stop the clock. This is a little shocking. Fourth and seven, they're going to go for it from the Shepard 35 with just under seven minutes left. Probably too far to kick. You don't want to risk a punt because Shepard's been dangerous. And you have a chance to really to put put your foot on the neck of this Rams football team. Yeah. Novak under some heat. Throws toward the sideline and caught by Hasty. Inside the 15 yard line. We'll see if they roll oh, to catch. They do. Catch. He definitely had the feet. The question was did he have control? And depending on your angle, you may have thought that he bobbled that one. Tough to tell from here. They ruled a catch. It's a first and ten, and that's why you go for it. You put the game pretty much away now as long as you don't turn it over. First down and ten from the 15. I mean, still a lot of time left. 
but it's looking more and more like Kutztown's going to find a way to pull this one out with the 10-point lead in just six minutes to go. They can still kill more clock even if they have to kick a field goal. But that would have been a 52-yarder, so you definitely probably weren't going to see that at the college level. Here's Davis McNeil up the middle, tackled by Harold O'Neill. Clock rolling down to 5.50 left. 13-3, to three, cuts down on top. Trying to put this one away against Shepard as the turnovers will be the story when the Rams look back on this one. Give credit to the Kutztown defense. It seemed like Shepard had an opportunity after Antoine Lloyd muffed the punt. He went to pick it up, and it was available. Shepard fell on top of it. They had the ball in the red zone inside the 10, but Malachi Brown laid it on the turf, and Kutztown recovered, and now the Golden Bears are driving down for the win. Davis McNeil or I guess to seal the win, as they already had the lead. He finds a little bit of room, tackled on the play by Carter Adams. Under five minutes to go. Third down again. And again, this defensive unit, they've just, they've played their tails off today, but they've just been out there all day long trying to make stops. So you go up against a quality opponent like Cutsdown, they might be a little bit down. They lost a couple of tough games early on in the season coming in one and two, but don't let that record fool you. This is a talented ball club, one of the top-tier organizations in the PSAC, so you know you're going to have a tough test today. The Rams' defense played well, probably their best game of the season, just one of the rare circumstances where they don't get a lot of help on the offensive side of the ball, not too many times where the Rams' offense kind of sputters the way it has today. Davis McNeil up the middle, and that's That's the the explanation point. Touchdown, Kutztown, 19-3 with 4-10 to go in this ball game. The extra point will run on for the Golden Bears. And again, nothing fancy. Down block to the right, kick out on the backside, and trust your veteran running back to find that crease and get it into the end zone. And Davis McNeil, again, his numbers don't jump off the sheet at you. But I tell you what, I, I I bet you the defense has a different opinion because they've been having to tackle him all day. If it's extra point is good. Let's take another 30-second break. It's now 20 to 3. Golden Bears, 4-10 to go. We'll see what Shepard can do, but definitely a tough deficit. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10. We have a flag on the extra point. We'll get that to you after this 30-second break. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. Kutztown takes the ball over 90 yards into the end zone to seal the deal after the Malachi Brown fumble. It's now 20-3 with 4-10 left. Rams trying to at least get some momentum heading into next week. But, I mean, anything is possible in the game of football. Of course, you have the onside kick. But down 17 with 4-10, it feels like the Golden Bears just need to, you know, play – mistake-free football, or, or not mistake-free, but just, you know, keep that clock rolling and obviously, you know, avoid some miracles from Shepard's side, and they should be able to win this one. You never want to say the game's over, but it, it just feels like cuts down kind and of they, uh, sealed the deal with that yeah, touchdown run. Not, not a surprise on the uh, or scoring kick drive return summaries. here. So, so, excuse me. Go ahead. It's okay, Travis. Brought to you by <laughs> Paul Espinoza for State Senate, a fiscally conservative voice for the 16th district go ahead it looks like the rams have made a change on their kick return unit having dorner and greer back deep and just a tough day for malachi brown yeah uh several fumbles in this one i believe it's 
three today for Malachi. So two interceptions as well. A lot of turnovers on the Shepherd side. And that'll be the story that I'm sure Coach McCook will talk to us about on Wednesday. But And Kutztown is a good enough team where if you make that many mistakes, they're going to be able to take advantage of it and capitalize it and make you pay. Yeah, I mean, most teams would, especially how this season's been where every game's been close. If you're making turnovers and it seems like the room for error has been very small for this team, uh, you're not going to win. Cam Dorner gets the kickoff return. Dorner has some room. Dorner running more side to side than up the field. Gets about the 23 or so, and Shepard will take over. Looked like he may have had a lane if he wanted to get north and south, but just trying to use that speed to get to the edge and turn it up, and cuts down was able to drag him down at about the 21-yard line. And the Rams are in need of some big plays if they want to get back into this one, and big plays have been hard to come by in today's contest. Just not, not in a good rhythm, really haven't been able to get anything going as far as running, Throws to the sideline have been tough. And, I mean, you got hats off to that Cutstown secondary. They, they've usually played Shepard pretty well in years past. They've come out with a good plan of playing off, keeping everything in front of them, and rallying to the football and tackling well in space. But they really haven't even really been tested so far today. Just the weather conditions with the rain and the wind and wide receivers not really having sure footing out there. Really haven't been challenged on the edge. But the Rams haven't made an adjustment to try to attack them down the middle of the field either. So right now, this Rams, excuse me, this cuts down defense, really pressing their advantage here to try to close this game out. Yeah, I mean, four minutes is still some time. 17 points is obviously a lot, but it's possible. You never know. Shepard looking incomplete. Ball again looking. Well, Morgan took a shot, too, but. Like. I think the ball slipped down, intended for Cordell Batten. Big Freddie Redder supplying the pressure that time. The 6'3", 255-pound redshirt freshman from Quakertown, PA. If this score holds, Shepard's goals of winning the East get a little bit tougher. Since Kutztown already had a loss, you could afford a loss, but not to the Golden Bears in conference. Of course, a lot of games left to be played. Here's a pass complete over the middle to Barry Hill. Big play there, tackled by Drew Henser. Again, there, there's no reason to try to ice skate uphill. They're giving you a too high safety look, which means they're probably going to be playing the safeties over the top, helping on the edge. That's going to open things up over the middle. Take what the defense is giving you. Morgan Holding. under heat My again, goodness. throwing toward the sideline, incomplete intended for Cam Dorner. The crowd is seeing what you saw there. It looked like <laughs> Chandler Brown, I believe, might have got away with one. But Oh, man, he almost snatched the guy's jersey off. And we have a player down. That is Justin Harris for Kutztown. So. That, that's been a banged-up secondary. So Hopefully just a cramp, it looks like. Yeah, it yeah looks that's like they're pushing the toe back. A, a cold, cool day and late in the game, and you, maybe you're not drinking as much water as you normally would or harder to stay warm and loosened up. So you're going to start seeing some of these cramps here later in the fourth quarter. Shepard returns home again next week. Take on Shippensburg for the Hall of Fame game at Ram Stadium. And then it's back on the road for Lockhaven and Millersville the next few games coming up for the Rams. But this one definitely disappointing. That will, if it holds... It will end the streak of the one-score games between these two teams. It will not end the streak of the road team always winning in Shepard Kutztown. There's a whistle from the sideline official. Let's see what goes on, but for Coach Jim Clements of the Kutztown Golden Bears, his ninth season at KU. 67 and 25. He will get career win number 134. If KU can hold on here. 
with a 17-point lead with 3.26 to go in this fourth quarter. Not certain what the delay is. Malachi Brown back in the backfield. and I just think the, the Rams coaches have made the decisions like, look, these are the guys that we have, and we, we have to make it work. The only people in this room that are going to be able to fix it are the guys that we currently have. So we're not, you know, Ronnie Brown's not walking through that door. So if you're going to have success with this season and, and try to make some type of postseason run, you're going to have to get it done with Russell and Brown. So, and again, you want to have access to your whole playbook. So maybe you have some younger guys on the roster, maybe just not having that familiarity with the offense. So you're going to have to go up-tempo and use Malachi's Brown hands out of the backfield. That's something that we really haven't seen him used as much. You know, like we mentioned, he's a converted wide receiver. You would think that his hands and his ability out of the backfield will be incorporated a bit more into the offense, but haven't seen that so much so far this season. Morgan looking to throw. On second and ten, dumps it down to Malachi Brown, makes a good catch. It's a little bit behind him. He had room to run if he puts it out in front of him, but just an off-target throw, and Brown just does a good job of making an adjustment to bring it in, but had an opportunity for a nice run and catch on that play if the ball's put out in front of it. Well, Shepard has never not scored a touchdown in the Ernie McCook error. As they throw underneath to Ooh. Brown, and he... Took a non-football fall or non-contact fall to the ground. Definitely a scary thing. Yeah, yeah that's good to see him get up. He's coming off of a knee injury, so that's another thing to note. You know, with some of the fumble issues, not only is he learning a new position, but he's getting used to playing again. Coming off of that season-ending injury he suffered last year, of course. I'm just, I'm just happy to see him be able to walk off under his own power because a lot of times when guys go down like that, it, it, it is not a good result. Isaiah Russell check in. Yep, definitely good to see Malachi jog off. Morgan under some pressure, spins away. Good blocking. Just nothing has really opened up when great catch by the coach on the cuts down side. <laughs> going, up, going up in the crowd. Like we said, there's not a lot of space over here on these sidelines. Sometimes the coaches might get a ball. I don't know if he has any eligibility left, but he did a good job of adjusting on the ball while it was in the air. That was good pass protection that time by the Rams offensive line. Just giving Seth Morgan plenty of time to look downfield, but just like we mentioned, that, that cuts down. There. Yeah, that cuts down secondary. Like they have they have played lights out football today. Morgan has had some opportunities to extend some plays. The O line has held up pretty good for the most part today for Shepard. Turnover on downs will give the ball back to cuts down with two seventeen left. KU looking to just put this one completely away now with 2.17 to go at 20 to 3. Novak sends a man in motion, but you would expect this to stay on the ground. It does with Jordan Davis. He just finds what he can. Jack Baxter comes up to make the tackle. Shepard is burning its timeouts. And we'll take one as well. Let's take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube 23 cuts down. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. 23, 2 12 to go in the fourth quarter. Cuts down, hands the football. Second down and 10. The Golden Bears on top. Shepard trying to get a stop here defensively coming out of this timeout. As you still have two left. You got to burn them, I guess, from a pride perspective kind of thing. Sometimes coaches will look at it that way. As we at least want to avoid again. I don't 
or just looking back, I don't think Shepard has been shut out in terms of no touchdowns or hasn't not scored a touchdown in a game since at least Coach McCook took over and just going back, couldn't find anything going back to 2016 at the very least. And I mean, this is a premier program. There's yeah. not too often that that happens where they don't score a touchdown at least in a game. And from a coaching standpoint, you call these timeouts because – In the regular season, I should yeah. say. Don't know about postseason. Yeah. And oh, as a coach, you're calling these timeouts down the stretch. That camera's still rolling, so you're going to go back and watch film, and you want to see who's still in the fight at the end of the game. Even though the outcome is likely decided, you want to know the guys that you can rely on when things get really tough and things look their darkest because you got some players out there, and they're starting to check out when things aren't looking good. You might have to go in another direction. So you go on out there calling timeouts. You're going to go back and watch film. See who's the guys that is going to stay in that fight and battle to that last second ticks off the clock. So, again, this is just something for the coaches to learn more about their players moving forward. We mentioned how they're, you know, using different combinations of players up front. This is an opportunity for them to get that many more looks to see who, who wants the job and who wants to put in that work for the team as the year goes on. Third down and four from the 45, 207 to go, 23 KU on top of Shepard. They'll run Davis. Davis fighting forward close to the sticks. Like Komayao and Bednarski in on that one. And now the officials are delaying things here. Looks like they may call for a measurement. 154 to go. Oh, they called it. They're moving the sticks. And we'll move the chains for the first down. Shepard will now burn its final timeout, but that first down pretty much seals it now, Travis, with just a minute 54 left. And again, cuts down when they had their troubles early on in the game, but after they got the turnovers eliminated, they just got back to what they do best, ground and pound, protect the football, eat up clock, and keep that Shepard offense on the sidelines. And that's one of the things when you're – in a game like this, yes, the weather conditions are working against you, the rain, you know, not good footing, the wind is, is going to throw off your passing game. But more importantly, it's hard to get into a rhythm. When you're standing on the sidelines for seems like 10 to 15 minute stretches at a time, it's easy to fall out of rhythm. And, and that's something that's really given that Rams offense some issues today is that they just haven't been out there on the field long enough in order to get comfortable and get into a rhythm. Look like it's going to be a little bit short, so a fourth down coming up, but with the beef that the Golden Bears have available to them on the offensive side of the ball, I doubt that they're going to punt it. I'm yeah. just going to grind it up. But they do have a very good punter, so they might just go ahead and, and go for that and look like try they, they could try to pin them. But I think the offense is staying on the field. so I don't blame them. Yeah, even if you turn it over on downs, there's only a minute 54 left. You have a 17-point lead. You can completely put it away, give no hope to Shepard. If you get a first down here, if you punt, there is still a little bit of hope. With a minute 54, and, of course, there's the onside kick possibility. So you can completely put it away here, and I'm expecting QB sneak maybe with the big tight end lined up behind Novak on fourth and inches. I'll say give it to the big tight end. He's been out there doing the dirty work today. Go ahead and give him a little cherry on top of his Sunday with a short yardage play. He's like, Coach, I've been, I've been working on it all year. He is 6'1", 270. So he definitely would be tough to bring down. Shepard having issues getting the right personnel on. Now they bring on the extra linebackers. They're expecting the QB sneak as well. Goal line formations essentially for both teams. They run Novak and he gets the push and has the first down. So Travis, you don't get his, your wish, but <laughs> he gets the assist on the play. Yeah. Next time maybe, next time. And with no timeouts left for the Rams, probably going to see a series of knees coming up. Yep, that's what is to be expected here at this point in the ball game. A lot of communication going back and forth with the Custown sidelines to line up in the victory formation. <laughs> that seemed like a long conversation <laughs> just to get into that formation. Maybe it's a very complicated signal. <laughs> That's what it is. You can't let I would them just know. Like, the thumbs up. That should do it. I'll give them the thumbs up. We're good. 
Well, you can't let them know what, what your sing <laughs> oh, was for yeah. QB Neal. But they do take it. And they'll take uh, at least one more. But Kutztown is going to get a very impressive win. I think they go back and they look at how week one went with the big lead, or I should say week two, uh, when they had the big lead against Cal, let that one slip. Definitely, you know, hurts you in the PSAC standings. You know if you want to contend for the championship uh, coming out of the East, you have to win today on the road at Shepard most likely, just based off of typically how things go. And for Kutztown, they do it. They come on the road and get a huge win over the Shepherd Rams and not the best field position or field conditions. The Rams on the other side, your goals are still in front of you, but it's going to take some help now with the loss to KU. And, of course, you never know what's going to play out in the PSAC regular season. But this was a tough one. Not so much only that you lose, not so much that you lose completely, is the only thing that's tough about it. But the way you lost, you really don't have a whole lot of positives on the offensive end to take away from this one. The defense, though, showed some growth, showed a step forward. It feels like. Yeah, I, I, exactly. So I mean, definitely, if you want to be glass half full, you can look at the things that they were able to do on defense. But they were just out there for so long. But, again, early on in the game, they were able to get some turnovers. They were able to get some pressure on the quarterback. That was something that was lacking early on this season. They were tough against the run until the very end, but you expect that. And there's a little dust up there in the middle of the field. And it was a tough game, guys. There's no reason to make things uglier than what they were today for you. So you don't want to mess up things as far as somebody getting suspended. So you're hoping that cooler heads prevail. Yeah, it's just kind of a trend, it seems like, on whenever one of the big programs that Shepard has built a rivalry with, whether it be as we have some more stuff going on on the other side of the field, between Emilio Pena and some of the Kutztown players on that far side. But in the PSAC, you know, the teams that Shepard has built the rivalries with, Obviously, Shippensburg has that long history, but it's more of a, hey, you guys are close to us kind of thing. Not necessarily the games have been super competitive. But Kutztown, IUP, we see it a lot. Just a little bit more chippiness after the play. I've seen the coaches are separating their ball clubs. And, again, you don't want anybody to do anything foolish where they could possibly get hurt or, or get a suspension. I mean, you, you went out there, you, you did what you were able to do today. It wasn't the result that you wanted but you certainly don't want to have any more negatives to follow you as this season goes on. And like we were talking about the offense, you got more questions now. You had that big game against Cal where you really felt like they were settling into something, but now not so much. Looks like Dylan does have Coach McCook, so let's go ahead and send it down there to Dylan Bishop with the head coach. All right, Coach, you guys were able to only put up three points on the board on offense today. Obviously, there was some weather coming into the game. It was raining a lot in pregame, but the rain kind of let up. What do you think contributed in the end to uh, the offense? The weather was a non-factor in this. Um, turning the football over as much as we did and not being effective with it. Uh, we didn't execute on offense. So I think our defense did a great job in the first half. You know, And we just put the, their backs against the wall way too much. I'm really disappointed with the ability to take care of the football. Um, and we we that's those are mistakes you can't make against well coached football teams like Kutztown. Obviously, got to look at the tape, but what do you think the message is going to be uh, coming out of this one to recover and move on to next week? The message is we've got to come back to work and get our get our job done. All right, thanks, Coach. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dylan. Certainly appreciate Coach McCook sticking around and. Uh, Doing the interview after the game, after Shepard falls in this one, tough style, 20-3. to three. But let's go ahead and take a two-minute break. On the other side of that break, we'll begin the post-game show. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Stephen Skinner, and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is, it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, 
the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a control force system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. It's the post game show as we recap the scoring, bring you stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV 10 broadcast team. We welcome you back to Shepherdstown as we get into the post-game show brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg with a full lunch and dinner menu with daily specials and a clean, comfortable atmosphere. Check out the menu on the Palace Lounge Facebook page. Nick Verzelini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us for the post-game show. Cuts down, gets the win over Shepherd 20-3. to three. Travis, just where do you go from here if you're Shepherd? And then for Cuts down, uh, what do you think really kind of separated them here today? Well, Cutstown, I'll, I'll jump on Cutstown first. The, the weather conditions really lended, lended itself to the style of play that Cutstown likes to do. We know that they're stout on defense, but they have that power running game, two running backs that can go in and make plays for you, and that's what they were able to lean on today, and that really helped out that young quarterback. He struggled early on with a lot of turnovers, but he was able to settle in because he had those type of running backs that he could lean on to kind of supplement that offense until he got on track. So I, I think the weather conditions really helped out the Golden Bears, but they came in there and took care of business. They were able to capitalize on the mistakes that the Rams made today, and the Rams made a plenty. Uh, as far as uh, looking at it, as far as uh, progress, the Rams defense stepped up and played really well today. They were just out there all daggone day. Uh, you, you can't ask that much of them going up against a team as talented as Cutstown, but I believe that they played well enough to win. It's just very rare that we see this Rams team where that Rams defense doesn't have the help from the offensive side of the ball as far as scoring points. The Rams defense, I think they're moving in the right direction. We thought that that unit was going to be leading the charge this year with so many veterans returning. Struggled early on to get a foothold, but I think they were able to establish a foothold today versus a quality cuts down team, but just the offense just had a power outage today. They weren't able to do the things they were like to be able to do. They weren't able to run the ball effectively. They didn't have big plays down to the sidelines, and again, that cuts down defense. Their secondary is top-notch today, and the Rams are just going to have to figure out because as you get later on in the season you want to play in the postseason, chances are weather conditions aren't going to be favorable most of those times, so they're going to have to be able to find a way to win, find an offensive game that can travel in bad weather. And I think that's going to be the challenge. And, again, is like you have Russell and Brown in the backfield. Somebody's going to have to emerge from that group so that Rams can have some type of balance on offense because I don't think they can rely on Seth Morgan dropping back and trying to throw the ball 30 and 40 times and, and expect to have a lot of success. He's not that type of quarterback. This offense really isn't geared for that this year. So, Again, this Rams offense just, just searching to find an identity with this offensive group. they got some talented pieces, a veteran offensive line, so they've got to find something that they can rely on week in and week out. And, again, you just want to, want to learn your lessons. Some are harder to learn than others, but you want to try to improve and get better as the season goes on. But like you mentioned, losing a conference game like this to, to a tough opponent really shrinks that margin of error that was already pretty thin moving forward. So if you have any aspirations for postseason play, you really can't afford to have any more mistakes down the stretch. 
Again, Shippensburg comes in here next week, so another rival on the schedule for the Rams. Shepard falls 20-3 to Kutztown. Hopefully we'll have some postgame stats for you on the other side of this two-minute break. If not, we'll get into Travis's awards. This is the Shepard Rams Palace Lounge postgame show on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in two minutes. Hi, Crescia Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. At Carter Myers Automotive, what we do today will tomorrow become what we've done. That's why Owners Just Do More no longer defines us. Our work is never done because what we live by doesn't have a finish line. We care. Our company of owners is moving lives forward every day by finding more ways to care before, during, and after your purchase. Because when you're happy, so are we. Carter Myers Automotive. Proud to be the owners who just care more. I pre-planned my funeral to make it easier on my family. They were relieved to know I'll get just what I want. My family actually thanked me for taking matters into my own hands. Turns out having this awkward conversation wasn't awkward at all. Pre-planning is my choice. There are certain things about me my family may not know. Now they won't need to guess. The choices are yours. The peace of mind is theirs. Pre-plan your funeral with Brown Funeral Homes and everything will be taken care of. Find out more online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. We welcome you back to Ram Stadium in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. We, I don't believe we're going to receive any official numbers. The uh, live stat's not working on the Rams' website. So uh, what we can tell you is Davis McNeil had a touchdown. He had a pair of field goals as well um, from the Kutztown side. Nick Lovenguff also yes, had a touchdown. Yes, that was the other one that I couldn't remember there. But Lovenguff had a touchdown, and then Shepard had a field goal. So your postgame stats brought to you by Bechtel Jewelers, West Virginia's largest Pandora retailer on Route 11 South Inwood, taking care of you like nobody's business. But, Travis, let's get into our awards. Not a whole lot of them, but what is your electrifying play of the game in a defensive game like this? There were some nice interceptions on the Shepard side, but – didn't really lead to much, so kind of tough to give those out. But uh, what would you say would be your electrifying play of the game brought to you by Orsini's Home Store, not just an appliance store any longer located at 360 Hack Wilson Way in Martinsburg or online at Orsini's.com? Well, my electrifying play of the game is going to go to Caden Hasty from the Cutstown Golden Bears. In the fourth quarter, it was a fourth down catch, and it was just a big catch as far as just sealing the game at that point, just – the Rams still had a pulse and a shot to win the game, but when Caden Hasty was able to come up with that big fourth down catch, that kind of sealed the deal for today's contest. So Caden Hasty gets my electrifying play of the game. What about your collision of the game brought to you by Cody's Auto Body at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg, family-owned, offering superior customer service and great pricing for a job done by experienced certified technicians. Call 304-901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. Well, it happened early on in the game. It was Amari Terry in the first quarter, about seven minutes and 47 seconds left in that first quarter. He had a huge hit on third and short. He made a ton of plays today, sacking the quarterback, but that time he was able to blow up the big running back in the backfield. So Amari Terry gets my collision of the game. Yeah, I like that one. I think another one, though, uh, if you wanted to go on the Kutztown side, Nigel Wilson had that big hit on Malachi Brown. uh, I believe it was in the third quarter. So that was another one that stood out. 
Um, but what about your good hands catch of the game? Brought to you by Kelly Allstate Insurance for all of your insurance needs. Call Gary Kelly at 304-263-4596 or stop by 724 Lakeview Drive in Martinsburg. Well, I'm going to give it to the big fella from Cutstown, the tight end, Tyreek Husser, the big 32-yard catch early on in the game, and that was really the first big offensive play of the game for either team, and that kind of got the ball rolling for that Golden Bears offense. The big fella doesn't get much love. I believe that was only his second catch of the season, so and it was a big one. It helped get the ball rolling for the Golden Bears, so Tyreek Husser gets my catch of the game. What about player of the game? Brought to you by Bodwell Insurance Solutions, a local professional to help you with all of your Medicare needs. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or call 304-283-0864. Well, I'm going to give it to the young quarterback from Cutstown, Judd Novak, the redshirt freshman, able to come in today, got off to a rocky start. Plenty of turnovers early on, but once he was able to settle into a groove, he was really the difference maker on that offensive side of the ball. You knew what you were going to have with your running backs between Davis and Davis McNeil, and again, they showed up and played very well for that Golden Bears offense, but I think Judd Novak was the difference maker with his mobility, able to get out of side of the pocket, pick up some first downs with his legs. He was also able to create some space and keep his eyes downfield and throw some on-target passes, so Bright future for that young man. I was kind of surprised that he was out there instead of Donnie Blaine, but he shows why the coaches had so much faith in him. He went out there and took care of business today. Yeah, he definitely played well. You could Brazilian, just give it to the back. entire Cutsdown defense if you yes, wanted to yes, today good. as they hold Shepard to just three points. And I can't tell you the last time that's happened. I have to go back quite a bit, I would imagine. But Shepard falls in this one again, 20-3. to three. To the Kutztown Golden Bears. Rams fall now to 3-1 and one on the year. Again, they're back next week at home against Shippensburg. That is a noon kickoff. 11.30 a.m. will be on the air with the pregame show here at Ram Stadium. But for Dylan Bishop, Matt Miller, Daryl Miller, and Travis Smith, I'm Nick Verzellini, Colin McLaughlin, back in the studio. You'll hear from him on the other side of this two-minute break with the postgame scoreboard show. Have a good day, everyone, and once you get in your final score, 23, cuts down over Shepard. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it. It can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We want to get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm in new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family. And we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. Before the invitations and the dress, the flowers, cake, candles, or vows, there is an answer to a question proposed with a ring. Bechtel Jewelers knows that an important part of your wedding happens before the I do's. We're a diamond store with an engagement and bridal jewelry selection that's both exciting and accessible. On the big day, there's everything else and there's the ring. Make sure you get this one right at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most 
what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Welcome into the post-game scoreboard show here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube as the Cutstown Golden Bears get the 20-3 win over the Shepherd Rams as Shepherd now falls to 3-1 and on the year. Cutstown improves to 2-2 two and two as this one of the lowest scoring games it looks like the lowest scoring game I've been trying to go back here into the schedule for Shepard and I haven't seen anything with threes to it for them so the lowest scoring game for the Rams dating all the way back to 2005 and I haven't got to go any farther back than that yet but we'll get that for you for the sports mix potentially on Monday but now let's take a look at some scores from around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference as you can see here three minutes 42 seconds to go in the fourth quarter it is Millersville in the lead over Westchester by a score of 23 to 14 California University of Pennsylvania gets the win over Edinburgh by a score of 31 to 10 in that one as it's officially final in the third quarter with three minutes and four seconds to go between East Stroudsburg and Lockhaven. Those two teams tied at 21 apiece. Let's switch over to some other scores now. Currently going on in the third quarter with 4.47 to go. It is Clarion 20, Gannon 17 now. So even though it says on the screen there 2014, it is now 20 to 17. Another score for you, 7-0. Shippensburg leads Bloomsburg with 11.24 to go in the fourth quarter. Also in the fourth quarter, just getting started in quarter number four, it is IUP and... Mercyhurst, that now 30-7 to as IUP has just scored. So that now at 30-7, to and then kicking off here in five minutes, it will be Slippery Rock and Seton Hill. So those are your scores from around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Let's now get some NCAA Division I scores for you nine minutes four seconds to go in the fourth quarter it's 24 24 number four florida state and clemson 10 59 to go in the fourth quarter it's number 16 oklahoma in control over cincinnati at 20 to 6 and a final score between number two michigan and retgers michigan gets the 31 to 7 win in that game Kicking off at 3.30 in some top 25 action, it's number 19, Colorado, at number 10, Oregon, number 22, UCLA, at number 11, Utah, number 15, Ole Miss, at number 13, Alabama, number 18, Duke, at UConn, number 20, Miami, at Temple, and then at 4 o'clock, it's UTSA at number 23, Tennessee, and then at 7 p.m. tonight, Arkansas at number 12, LSU, number 14, Oregon State, at number 21, Washington State, Charlotte at number 25, Florida. Then at 7.30, UAB at number 1, Georgia. Number 3, Texas at Baylor. Number 6, Ohio State at number 9, Notre Dame. Number 24, Iowa at number 7, Penn State. And then at 8 o'clock, number 17, North Carolina at Pittsburgh. And at 10.30 tonight, number 5, USC against Arizona State, California at number 8, Washington. The West Virginia Mountaineers will kick off at 3.30 for the Gold Rush game as they host Texas Tech in that game as the Mountaineers trying to finally get a win over Texas Tech as Texas Tech has won the past four meetings.
between these two schools. And before we wrap things up, going to try to see if I can get the Marshall final score. It looks like they're still in action. Marshall on top of Virginia Tech right now, 24 to 10, with 8:18 to go in the fourth quarter. So there you go, your final score in this one. Cuts down 20. Shepard three as the Rams lose for the first time this year. And again, it's the road team getting the win in this rivalry. That wraps things up here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. I'm Colin McLaughlin signing off. You've been watching coverage of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd Rams in the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's coverage is brought to you by the Smallwood and Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Marius Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford of Martinsburg, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremations Robert Fields and Sons, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Freddy Law Firm. TV10 Sports thanks you for watching today's game. All rights reserved.